The main character of this story is Seraphim Clive. He is a senior student at Livonian School. Tomorrow, the students will write the first test exam, and today the classrooms were being prepared for the test, so the students were released early, immediately after the school meeting. A seraphim girl named Liana Solis appeared on the horizon. She was the best student of the year and also the most popular girl in the school. Noticing the guy, she wishes him good luck in the exam. The main character was born into an average family, and his grades were not the highest, but he was lucky to meet such a girl. True, this raised a lot of questions among other students, and even now, out of the corner of his ear, Seraphim heard his classmates discussing their couple. They are perplexed at what Liana could see in this homely boy. The girls think that they are not suitable for each other at all. Having gone home, Seraphim also began to think about this topic. In fact, he also could not understand why Liana liked him. In addition, he was worried about one more thing. His girlfriend is the first in academic performance, so he definitely won't be able to enter the same university as her. Disturbing thoughts begin to swarm in his head, whether he is good enough for her. And as soon as he thought that he would like to be like the hero of some novel, some kind of glow suddenly appeared above his head. The light becomes brighter, and an unknown creature appears from it, which immediately greets Seraphim and reports that the activation was successful. Out of fear, the young man hid behind the closet, telling the unknown creature not to come closer if it didn't want to deal with his ruler. The creature gets angry and says that the system is not a joke, but the latest high-tech development of Planet X, where you need to complete the tasks of the system, and for this, it will reward the participant. However, she informs Seraphim that for now he is an ordinary user, and in order to become its master and own the system, he will need to pass a test. And he adds that the system is already giving him the first task, which includes following his words and becoming one of the ten best students in the class. Seraphim is perplexed as to how he can do this, unless he can get into the top ten of the worst, but the creature reminds him that the young man himself said how much he wants to achieve this, but if he does not complete the task, the system will be removed. The main character was scared not only because an impossible task fell on him, he wanted to know if this flying girl would disappear along with the system. But the creature replied that she was not a devil. Therefore, she could not give him impossible tasks. Having said this, she directed an orange beam at Seraphim, which completely engulfed the young man. She had given him a free beginner's kit. It would expire in a month, and how far Seraphim could advance would depend on his willingness to work. Having finished the phrase, she said goodbye and disappeared into space, leaving the hero alone. Seraphim immediately decided to get into the system and try to find out more about all this. Suddenly he saw a column in which it was mentioned that the system had endowed him with a brilliant memory. And, of course, the young man immediately wants to check it. Taking the book and reading about a couple of pages, he was delighted. It all turned out to be true. He remembered everything. Continuing to admire what was happening, he suddenly came to the idea that if he did not complete the task, the system would immediately delete everything, and it turns out that he would simply have to continue living as before. Seraphim understands that, faced with ridicule and claims, he will not be able to do anything except endure or run away. But he understands that he no longer wants to put up with this, because he finally has a chance to change his destiny. The hero must grab onto it. Now it's almost two o'clock in the afternoon, and his exam will begin tomorrow at nine in the morning. To be in shape, he needs at least three hours of sleep. As a result of these calculations, he comes to the conclusion that he has 14 to prepare hours. In 15 seconds, he read and memorized two pages, spending a minute on eight pages. In an hour, he would learn 480 if he could remember all the answers to the Chinese and mathematics questions that might come up on the test tomorrow. If he succeeds, then he will increase the level of his knowledge by 100 points, and it is even quite possible that he will be able to score 600 points. The result of the best student in his class was 650 points, but if he could get 600 points, he would be in the top 10. At 8 o'clock in the evening, he went to dinner, and even at this time he did not look up from his textbook. Even his mother admonished him to put the book down while eating. Having gone to her son at 1 in the morning, the woman also found him sitting behind a book. She reminded him that he had a test tomorrow, so it was time to go to bed. The time approached three in the morning, but Seraphim did not go to bed. 
but simply continued reading under the blanket with a flashlight. Suddenly a fairy appeared. She noticed how the young man was diligently studying, and before him 1,072 of his predecessors had failed. After all, even having received the strongest ability, without hard work, it is impossible to achieve anything. Only those who are ready to work hard have a chance to experience this strongest system. As a result, the next day, already sitting in class, Seraphim was not in the best physical shape. He liked studying so much that he studied all night, even though he wanted to sleep, but still his efforts were not in vain. He looked at every question and remembered answers to them. Liana, noticing that her boyfriend looked tired, decided to ask if he was confident in his abilities. Looking at the girl with a tired look, but at the same time smiling contentedly, he stated that he was sure that now he would make it into the top ten. His companion was a little embarrassed. She didn't understand what was wrong with him. It seemed to her that he had somehow changed. This phrase was heard by the rest of the students. Muffled giggles were heard throughout the class, and someone even choked on their drink. Noticing this, Seraphim felt a little awkward. He himself had already realized how too presumptuous it sounded. Liana blushed a little and smiling told the guy that she believed in him. She got up and, having collected her things, said goodbye to Seraphim as she was going to the exam and finally offered to meet later and have lunch together. The young man waved his hand at her, while louder laughs were heard behind him again. The guys were discussing whether Seraphim was ashamed to be such a clown. Realizing that he was being discussed behind his back again, the main character wanted out of habit to simply put on headphones so as not to hear it. But suddenly, out of anger and resentment, he squeezed the earphone. The question again sounded in his head whether he was worthy of dating Liana. With all his soul, he wanted to show everyone what he was really worth. By this time, exam options had already been distributed in the class, and the observer watching the class walked around the room and thought that there were so many weak children in this class, and there was no one here who took the exam seriously. At the same moment, Seraphim was glad to receive the option. It turned out to be one of those questions that he had learned last night. The difference was only in one meaning. And he also knew the answers to the rest of the questions on the form. He couldn't believe that everything except the numbers remained unchanged. Seraphim understands that in this case, 600 points is nothing. He was already sure that he would receive even more than 650 points. The observer noticed how Mr. Clive completed all the tasks suspiciously quickly. She decided to carefully look over his shoulder to make sure he wasn't cheating, and in the end she was very surprised. Four days later, Seraphim, coming to class, again received a joke from his desk neighbor named Ian. He again reminded him of the phrase about the top ten. He considered the young man the main braggart of the class, telling him that everyone was waiting for his next joke. Noting that it was his own fault that everyone was laughing at him, Seraphim objected to him, saying that everyone was simply jealous of him, since he and Liana were together, and therefore they were making him a scapegoat. Finally, the teacher entered the classroom with a huge pile of papers. Bringing them to the table, she simply threw them on him. It was clear that the teacher was unhappy. She mentioned in an irritated voice that this was just a trial exam that tested their readiness, and at the same time they analyzed all the tasks in class. Then she could no longer restrain herself and screamed at the whole class because she did not expect that her students would write it so poorly and wanted to know if they do not know how to pull themselves together in a critical situation, then how are they going to go to college? She calls the students one by one, announcing the results and handing over their exam forms. Finally, she called the top student of the class, David Frith. He scored 653 points. He was second in the class and 72nd in the overall standings. David went to his desk in bewilderment, while everyone began to whisper among themselves and guess who was the first in their class, and everyone became a little tense because there was only one person left, whose results were not announced. Finally, the teacher announced Seraphim. He scored 702 points, was in first place in the class, and second in the overall standings. The young man, happy, went to receive his form, while everyone in the class, including the teacher, was perplexed by what was happening. At the Livonian school, the teachers were already discussing the results of the trial exam. They were surprised how such a weak student was among the best. Someone suggested that the young man was definitely cheating, since the teacher had never in his life seen a student wise up so quickly. The teacher thought, 
Even if the student had the opportunity to look at the reference materials during the exam, it is unlikely that he would be able to immediately score 700 points like that. Another teacher also thought about this, because it is impossible to find the answer to a question in a book if you have no idea where the necessary material is, which means that the student really prepared hard. Suddenly, the deputy director loudly slammed a stack of papers on the table and loudly ordered the topic to be closed. And then he asked each of the teachers to draw up a new exam version, since he wanted this sensational student to take the test again tomorrow. The next day, sitting in class, Seraphim already had time to think that it seemed like everyone had already forgotten about what happened yesterday. And what was great was that he still remembered all the material he had learned. By this time, his memory had become even better. Suddenly, a teacher came into the classroom and asked Seraphim to go with her to the teacher's room. Before he even set foot outside the classroom, his classmates immediately began discussing his trip to the teacher's room, suggesting that he had been caught cheating. Entering the staff room, he quickly knocked and greeted all the teachers and class teachers. The deputy director immediately suggested that he not beat around the bush and immediately stated that some teachers doubted that he wrote this exam honestly. There are those who do not believe in him, and therefore he himself personally agreed that Seraphim retake the test. The young man asked a little irritably if he would really be the only one to retake this exam. Another teacher had already carefully pulled out a chair for the student, telling him not to think that they doubted his abilities. He just has to perceive the retake as an opportunity to improve his knowledge. Seraphim sat down at the table dissatisfied, asking if this friendly teacher, who said such nice things, thought that he was actually cheating. But one way or another, the hero was not worried. He learned all the questions, so he was not afraid of a retake. But having taken a closer look at the form, Seraphim suddenly panicked. It turns out that the teacher had prepared new tasks for him so that the young man would definitely not have the opportunity to cheat. Even though he didn't cheat on the trial exam, if now he makes a mistake and cannot solve these tasks, he will be unfairly accused of lying. And then, out of nowhere, a fairy appeared. She greeted Seraphim and congratulated him on completing his first task. The teacher noticed how the student seemed to freeze in place and already had time to think that perhaps the child was afraid of the list of questions. But suddenly the young man hits the table and declares that everything is fine and he is ready to receive his reward. The teacher has a vague belief in his abilities and still considers him a bad student and his behavior is proof of this. An hour and a half later, he picked up the paper and told the teacher that he was done with chemistry. Another hour and a half later, he handed the exam paper to the math teacher. The entire teaching staff immediately crowded around the teacher to find out whether the student had coped with the task. The teacher replied that she was not sure about chemistry because she did not write the questions, but in all likelihood, the answers were correct. But the mathematics is written accurately. Pure answers, correct solutions. She confirms that this is without a doubt a great job. One of the teachers begins to get even angrier. If he had known that this was a flower for Seraphim, he would have made the tasks even more difficult so that he would not show off. The teacher adjusted his glasses and asked the other teachers not to worry, since the student would have to work hard with physics. There are such difficult questions that even the best of the best cannot answer them. Seraphim begins to be annoyed by these conspirators, since he hears them all perfectly well, as a result, he turns and smiles to say that he did everything. The last task took a little more than 30 minutes. The teacher smugly took the work and, after looking at it, was shocked. He did not believe that the student spent less than 30 minutes on such a complex task. The entire teaching staff understands that at one point, they were so focused on checking the assignments that they did not notice how he easily solved all the assignments in half an hour. Did he really answer the questions faster than the teacher? It seems that it's not a matter of luck. Maybe he deliberately showed bad results before. The indignant teacher almost attacked the student, wanting to know whether he had solved the last problem himself. Seraphim laughs and says that he does not understand what the teacher is talking about, because he was under supervision all the time, from whom, in their opinion, he could ask the answer. The teacher chuckles awkwardly and explains that he is just confused, and talks about how glad he is that Seraphim scored the highest score. He also adds that it would be a big loss if this student does not understand participating in a physics competition. The young man wants to know whether competitions give him extra points for the entrance exams, and the teacher gives him a positive answer. 
Seraphim comes to the conclusion that then he will be able to become the second best student and get into any university. The teacher also confirms his words. But suddenly the sparkle disappears from the student's eyes, and to the surprise of the teacher, he says that this is not particularly important for him and he will not participate. And if there are no more questions for him, he asks to leave. Having said this, he quickly headed towards the exit. Walking along the corridor, Seraphim thinks about how good it is that he completed the first system task and received a reward, however. He doubts that everything will be easier further. Three hours ago, he received the award and immediately felt as if his mental abilities had improved. The voice of Liana, who was also walking along the corridor and noticed her companion, pulls him out of the abyss of his thoughts. Seraphim, without hesitation, headed towards her, surprised at what she was doing on the sixth floor. It turns out that she found out that he was called to the teacher's room and wanted to ask if everything was okay with him. The young man immediately admitted to her that he was forced to retake the exam. Everyone thinks that he could not improve the level of his knowledge in such a short time, and the young man himself would like to know whether Liana believes him. The girl approached him and gently cupped his face with her hands, looking him straight in the eyes. She stated that they can think what they want, but she believes in him. Even though his progress is truly incredible, she knows that he would not lie to her. Seraphim is pleased to hear this, but he still wants to know if she really thinks so. Liana blushes even more and says that if he continues in the same spirit, then they will be able to enter the same university. Seraphim was already preparing to hug his beloved when the teacher came out of the teacher's room, muttering to himself that the student was clearly not telling something, and if he was so smart, then why was he afraid to take part in competitions? Raising his head and seeing how the young man was standing close to the girl, the teacher pulled him back and immediately began to scold him for inappropriate behavior at school. Seraphim doesn't understand what the problem is because he doesn't do anything like that, but everything is serious with Liana. The teacher becomes even more furious because the student does not understand what the problem is. The teacher is angry because what kind of relationship can there be? After all, they are still school children, and their studies can suffer from such love. The young man decides to clarify one question with him, where he is on the list of academic performance. Gritting his teeth, the teacher answers him that he is second. Then the question touched on Liana, and then the teacher had to answer that the girl took first place. Seraphim throws up his hands and does not understand how, in this case, the teacher may still doubt that the relationship negatively affects their performance. Liana could not restrain herself and began to laugh. The teacher clearly did not like this, and he asked the young man not to talk nonsense. He decides to remind the student that his place in the overall standings has not yet been confirmed. Seraphim objects since the deputy director approved the results of his retake, and apparently the teacher suspects the student of colluding with him. The teacher asks not to cling to his words. He believes that there is something suspicious in the fact that he does not want to participate in physics competitions, which means that he was definitely cheating. Liana could not stand it and decided to stand up for her boyfriend, asking teacher Leon to stop insulting his students. Suddenly the young man takes her by the shoulder and, looking into her eyes, winks, saying that Leon has a reason for this. In any case, after everything the teacher said, he still wants Seraphim to take part in the competition, and the young man wants to know if this is so. The student is ready to do this, but only on one condition, if teacher Leon makes a bet with him. If he loses, he will do whatever the teacher asks of him, but if he wins, Leon will have to treat their entire class to chicken. The teacher was a little taken aback, as he thought in his head how much money he would have to spend in case of loss to buy a chicken for fifty people. Seraphim never tires of teasing him, saying that at first he accused him of passing the exam dishonestly, and now he is also afraid to enter into an argument with him. As a result, after thinking a little more, the teacher still agrees to this bet. A few more days passed, and the physics competition finally ended. It was raining heavily outside that day, and all the students wanted to quickly take their seats on the bus. Teacher Mary, who was sitting on the bus, was clearly not in the best mood. She doubted that good results should be expected from these students. But in practice, it is true, the Livonian school has never been strong in such competitions. The teacher who is supposed to be the team leader took the day off and asked Mary to fill in for him. The school doesn't seem to care much about this competition. 
The teacher was upset not only because she had to replace another teacher, but also because she lost to a new teacher named Lucinda Maxwell. But she still thinks that no matter how much experience Lucinda has in classroom management, her students will still be far from her. Five days later, the staff room was again more crowded. Of the students, Liana and Seraphim were there, and the young man decided to ask the girl why only they were invited here. Liana suggested that perhaps they want to announce the results of the competition. The deputy director finally became convinced that everyone had gathered and already wanted to give the floor to the director. Noticing that the students are whispering among themselves, Mary does not hold back and begins to scold them, because they imagine that if they earned a lot of points, then now they have the right not to listen while the teacher is talking to them. Next, Mary looks sarcastically at teacher Lucinda, as if hinting that her students were behaving inappropriately. Seraphim, seeing this picture, decided to butt into the conversation, saying that he did not understand what teacher Mary was talking about, and that he did not think that they behaved disrespectfully towards the teacher. Mary noticed that Seraphim and Liana were holding hands and decided to remind them that students are forbidden to be in relationships, but here they are walking arm in arm. All eyes immediately turned to teacher Lucinda. Seraphim realized that Mary did not get along with their class teacher, so she decided to take it out on her students. The young man realized that he needed to act. He raised his hands with Liana and loudly announced that they were dating, and no one expected what he did next. Seraphim pointed to the director and said that he knew everything about it and was not at all against it. The director even choked on his drink at such news. He didn't remember saying anything like that. Seraphim continues, The director promised that if they take a prize in the physics competition, then they will be able to officially date. The young man understands that if Mary wants to turn all the teachers against him, this will not happen. The deputy director decided to intervene and, winking at the director, said that he was also aware of this agreement. The director slapped himself on the forehead and pretended that he remembered how they discussed this, and the school was ready to allow a lot for such a wonderful student as Seraphim. Now that he had the support of many teachers, he felt his complacency growing by the second. Mary tries to object to the director, but he interrupts her and asks her to let him announce the important news. It turns out that at a physics competition, their school took first and second place. First place was taken by Seraphim Clive from Class 3-3, and second place by Liana Solis from Class 3-1. The director solemnly begins to clap his hands and wants everyone to praise the students and congratulate them on their victory. Mary hears how everyone begins to applaud in unison, and she cannot believe that Seraphim won this competition. She is also finished off by the fact that one of the teachers congratulated Lucinda on winning the competition. She had never heard of him before this incident, and she suspects that Liana could not train him that well. And if Mary were the head of the third class, then all the congratulations would go to her, and not to Lucinda. She was overcome by envy. Mary was sick of thinking why Lucinda was so lucky. While everyone was leaving the conference room, teacher Leon stopped Seraphim. The teacher smiled and reminded them that their bet was still valid and he would be happy to buy a chicken for their class. The young man was a little surprised because he didn't think that the teacher would take him seriously. He was just joking about the bet. Leon objects it was a fair dispute and he must keep his word because the teacher cannot do otherwise. Seraphim understands that it seems that the teachers are not really trying to make life difficult for their students. It's just possible that they can be a little impatient and pushy sometimes. Already in the lesson, Mary scolded her class for making many mistakes in such simple questions. She wants them to follow the example of Seraphim from class 3-3 because he only needed a month of preparation to take first place. Satisfied Seraphim, sitting in class, continues to think about teachers and understands that sometimes they are simply worried about their performance. Mary continued to be angry with her class. She wanted them to follow the example of the winning student, because after passing the exams, he also took part in competitions, where he took first place. Leon still kept his promise, and the whole class went to eat the goodies together. Mary did not end her tirade. She shouted that among her students there were simply no such hardworking students as Seraphim. The school children noticed that their teacher had already mentioned this Seraphim ten times. If they didn't know, they would have thought that this was her student. One of the students sitting in the back desk even seriously wondered who this Seraphim Clive was. The fairy again appeared to the student, 
and said that since he had successfully completed the first mission, and therefore, as a reward, she would grant him the ability to quickly comprehend, now he would be able to solve the assigned problems in one moment. Seraphim was delighted, and from then on he was able to cope with any task. Leaving the class, Ian tried to stop him, who wanted to find out if he was going home. The young man confirms and wonders why his classmate is not going home. The fat man reminds him that today they will have a match with the first class, and from the third parallel, Seraphim plays basketball best of all, and if he does not go with them, then they will definitely lose. The young man doesn't want to take part in this at all, so he begins to make excuses that he's been so busy lately and almost forgot about basketball. But seeing how upset Ian is, he picks him up and holding him says that it's time for them to go to the field and crush their opponents to smithereens. They arrived on the field and were immediately greeted by their team members. But his rivals also noticed him. One of them named Frank Kish, addressed Seraphim's class as scum, and wanted to know if they were ready to lose. The young man was just changing into his uniform and turned to Frank with a request to chat less, because they had gathered here to play and not to chat. The opponent supports him because time is not rubber, and the one who scores 50 points first will win. The game has begun. Frank dribbles the ball and quickly passes one opponent after another. He breaks sharply and quickly throws the ball into the basket. Now the score is 2-0 in their favor. The opposing team did not understand how this sudden attack happened. Was this Frank really ready to kill for the ball? Ian wants to know why Seraphim is just watching this. Frank, meanwhile, turned to them and told them to continue to stand on the sidelines, because this way he will definitely beat them. The main character asks his classmate not to worry, while he watched Frank dribble the ball and move forward. Then the young man felt the same as when solving problems. He seemed to feel inspired, and his brain began to think faster. His dribbling technique and the way he was able to get past defenders, Seraphim sees how to improve his movement and how to correct the mistakes he makes while dribbling. And it seems that he has already found the key to deciding whether it is possible that the ability given to him by the system also works during basketball. Frank takes the ball away from his opponent again. He exclaims that the third class doesn't seem to be that good. He advises them to try using a blocked shot. But suddenly, out of nowhere, Seraphim appears in front of him. He deftly snatches the ball and begins to dribble it. One of the opponents tried to trip him, but the young man jumped up and threw the ball forward. The ball went straight into the basket. Ian couldn't believe it. He watched his friends play and saw that he played exactly like Frank. Only Seraphim's throw was stronger and faster. The whole team immediately rushed to him to support him and asked the young man how he saw and immediately learned the opponent's move. Meanwhile, Frank was angry with his teammates, calling them losers, since no one stopped this brat who was throwing the ball. But the players do not agree with his claims. Why does he blame only them? Because in fact, Seraphim stole his ball handling technique. The game continues and Frank, again entering the field, shouts to the third class not to be arrogant, because they have just started the game. Seraphim grinned and said that although Frank did not understand it, the game was almost over. After another 30 minutes, almost all the opponents were already lying on the field from powerlessness. The main character reports that the score is currently 47 and 2 in their favor and thinks that he needs to go easy on the opposing team. But he notices that the opponents have even stopped resisting. Then Seraphim decides that it's time to test himself. He wonders what his limit is. He moved further away and began to aim. Frank noticed this and was shocked. His opponent was standing three steps beyond the three-point line. Seraphim understood that this throw would probably be 100% successful. Already, both teams were simply watching this with bated breath and saw the moment when the ball hit the hoop from such a distance. After this, Seraphim already realized that the game was over and was about to leave. Finally, he wants to find out whether the opponents are still ready to play with them because this is just a waste of time and he compliments this with the phrase that next time they could only play with him. The next day, Frank lost all mood to play because of Seraphim. At the same time, many players on the court happily threw the ball into the basket. A player named Brown Cole threw one ball after another, a couple more throws, and the number of hits would exceed a hundred. Brown noticed Frank behind the field bars and invited him to come out and play with them. But Frank rejects his proposal because he has no desire at all. The young man wants to know if he really lost with a score of 50 and 0. Frank shyly says that if he were as talented as Brown, he would not have let Seraphim down. 
The young man thought about it because he had already heard this name somewhere and even supposedly knew that this student was in third grade. Brown recalled that this might be the student Mrs. Lucinda had told the class about. And his classmates also constantly talk about Seraphim. Now even after lessons he has to hear this name, it infuriates him that this young man is now everywhere he looks. Brown throws the ball away and asks Frank to talk about his game with Seraphim yesterday. A little later, Ian and Seraphim were walking along the basketball court, and he, the main character, asked his friend to go first while he waited for Liana. And then, out of nowhere, a basketball, possibly deliberately thrown at him, rushed straight at the young man. Brown and Frank stood on the court, clearly waiting for the young man. Frank introduces Seraphim Brown as the point guard of their school team and the best player in Live on City. He heard that the young man wanted to compete with someone in throwing the ball, so Brown set aside time for this. Seraphim admits that he does not want to compete and, throwing the ball back, announced that he was leaving. Brown caught the ball and wanted to find out if the young man was really dating the first beauty of the school, Liana Solis, since he did not understand what she saw in him. He suggests that the girl may have something wrong with her eyesight, since she doesn't see what a weakling her boyfriend is. Seraphim headed out and declared that they would not be able to provoke him. At this time, the students had already crowded around the court and watched the confrontation between the two guys. They realized that someone clearly wants to fight the ball god. Seraphim decided to find out what Brown wants from him. He wants them to play, and when he blows, he will no longer be able to appear on the field and will also part with Liana. The main character began to warm up. He agreed to this bet and indicated that they would play until 10 points. But if his opponent loses, he wants Brown to call him Big Brother, the young man agreed, but said that first the guy would have to defeat him. The spectators expected Brown to win this dispute because he is the best scorer among high school students in the province. They do not understand how Seraphim dared to challenge him. Meanwhile, Mr. Cole had already scored the first ball. Seeing this, all the girls blushed a little and began to support the young man. Brown did not stop but demonstrated how he accurately hit the hoop from different points. Everyone saw that the young man, as always, was in excellent shape, and he was able to throw the ball into the basket nine times out of ten. They even suggest that it would be better for Seraphim to give up right away and not disgrace himself. Brown threw the ball into the hands of the protagonist and declared that now it was his turn. The young man stood up and, concentrating and measuring the distance, he launched the ball. Everyone watching was surprised because the rotation of the ball in the air was too strong. The ball went through the ring and falling to the floor bounced off and fell straight into the hands of Seraphim. Everyone was shocked by this reception since they did not have any special hopes for the young man. Then they watched as nine balls had already hit the basket and the player didn't even move. Brown didn't understand what the hell was going on. It didn't even look like he was superhuman. The students noticed that unlike Brown, who constantly ran after the ball, Seraphim seemed to handle the ball much more freely. They considered him a real god of basketball. Before the opponent's last throw, Brown noticeably tensed, wondering if Seraphim would score all ten goals. While preparing to throw, the main character noticed that the coach of the basketball team, Mr. Sions, was standing with the students. This alarmed him, because he just wants to go to the same college with Liana. And the main thing is that he is no longer forced to take part in different competitions, as he was then in physics. And after thinking about it, he throws the ball and, to everyone's surprise, does not hit the basket. Seraphim looks at Brown and, laughing, announces that it looks like they have a draw. At this time, Mr. Seans comes forward and asks the young man to go with him to the office of the deputy director. Frank at this time admits to Brown how worried he was and already believed that the guy could not be defeated. But you can't fool the best player. He saw that his opponent missed on purpose. The young man noticed how Seraphim looked at their coach and then threw an oblique three-pointer. Frank doesn't believe the opponent simply wanted to preserve Brown's reputation. Mr. Cole noted that you rarely meet such easygoing people as Seraphim after all this. The young man even respected him. Already standing in front of the teacher's room, the main character began to think the lessons were over, why suddenly the deputy director called him. Upon entering the room, he immediately saw the deputy, who greeted the student and ordered him to sit down, stating that as long as everyone was assembled, they could begin. 
The teacher invited the best students of the school here, but noted that every year among the best, there are always those who failed the entrance exams. Therefore, he and the teachers decided that the deputy director would lead the group of the strongest, and after school he would conduct intensive additional classes for them, they even warned their parents. Seraphim was not particularly pleased with this news, because it meant that he would also have to go to this study group. He was distracted by Liana, who noticed her boyfriend and greeted him sweetly. Seeing her, Seraphim realized that now he wouldn't be so bored here. Many students, on the contrary, took this news joyfully because their teachers brought them to the top. The deputy continued, he said, and drawing the students' attention to the fact that they had sheets of assignments in front of them, he himself identified two reasons why high scorers from previous years most often failed the exams. Firstly, they spent a lot of time solving the problem. The other tasks did not cause any difficulties, but solving one took them too much time, so they did not have time to complete the work. Secondly, they misunderstood the question posed in the task. Some students gave a detailed solution, but after receiving the results, they realized that they had made a mistake that affected the entire task, due to which they lost points. While all the students were looking through the assignments, Seraphim called the deputy director and suggested to him that if he proves that the assignments are not difficult, and it is quite possible to solve them with the highest score, if he succeeds, then can he allow him not to attend these classes anymore? The students did not like this attack. They think that Seraphim is an arrogant fellow because the deputy said that the problems can be solved. They just take a lot of time. Liana decides to join the conversation. She points out that Seraphim can prove because in fact he won first place in a physics competition. In addition, she is absolutely confident that he will also quickly complete the assigned tasks. The student objects to her, because she was always 20 points ahead of the second best performer at school, and Seraphim is unknown who, plus the competition in his opinion, is not even close to the entrance exams. Liana again begins to stand up for her boyfriend and says that he is everything will be able. The deputy is trying to break up the arguing school children because they are here to study, and at the same time he wants to know why they are arguing with each other in the first place. The teacher recalled how Seraphim showed himself during the retake of the exam. He solved problems quite quickly and correctly, and in this case he thinks that his experience can be useful to the children, so the deputy asks to share it with them. The young man just wanted to object to the deputy, but he reminded him that when the question of his relationship with Liana arose that time, he and the director supported him. Seraphim breaks off, his cheeks begin to rapidly turn red, and he thanks the teacher for his generosity that time. The deputy assures that the student can be calm, because he is always on the side of the students and is sure that everyone in this room will listen to his point of view, so he asks Seraphim to speak freely and confidently. The young man decides to try anyway, and begins to say that in his opinion, in order to achieve greater speed in solving problems, they need more practice, but they can improve their skills by memorizing examples of solving problems in advance. This is something like a software algorithm of actions, when before the main one there is also a preliminary process. Having memorized a sample solution to problems in advance, they significantly improve the efficiency of their work. For example, they might take a genetics problem that is worth average and takes some time and is therefore challenging. Similar problems take place in high school. In front of them, there are 16 ways of developing the situation, including various combinations, for which you need to create several solutions and remember the formulas. And when this problem comes across, it can be solved in a shorter time. One of the students objects, because for this method you need to remember a lot of things, and if, for example, they don't come across such a task, they will simply waste time. Seraphim suggests that everyone choose the best option for themselves, rote memorization before the exam or wasting time during the exam. The deputy liked the young man's option because the advantages of this method are enormous. Students will be able to spend not 30 seconds, but three on solving the task. Further, Seraphim suggests, in order not to get confused in the question itself and to highlight the necessary information, simply write down the solution on a separate sheet and use the formula to solve it. He compares it to playing chess. It's one thing to check and another to checkmate. He believes that those who go beyond their capabilities will be able to cope with any task. 
but students doubt that it is worth so much effort and whether it is even realistic. The deputy believes that there is common sense in Seraphim's words, of course. Students are not obliged to follow everything he advised, but there are some things worth listening to. Suddenly the young man felt a strange feeling, and out of nowhere he heard a notification that the system had granted him a new ability called the Feynman method of studying. A month later, at the next meeting of the best students, the deputy congratulated Seraphim because he overtook all the students at the school and finally took first place in the trial exam. The hero turns to the teacher and says that he should thank him for these services. This time he managed to finish the test ten minutes before the allotted time, and thanks to this he became more confident about the entrance exams. Another student also shared his experience, having worked with the group for two weeks on exam options, he felt that he had a better understanding of the concept of working on difficult questions. Seraphim chuckles and replies that he is only happy to help everyone, but he is confident to himself that none of the guys, without a system like his, will reach his level. To his surprise, he notices that Liana is behaving somewhat distantly and sadness is clearly expressed on her face. He wants to find out from her what's wrong. Maybe she's angry that he overtook her in the school test. But Liana replies that that's not the point, and she's very happy for him. Seraphim is still trying to find out why she feels bad, but the girl just refuses. Then the guy takes more drastic measures and, grabbing Liana by the hands, asks that if she cares about his feelings, then she should tell him the truth. Meanwhile, the deputy declares today's meeting over, and all but a couple of students quickly begin to get ready. Left alone, Seraphim once again asks her to tell him everything, and this time Liana agrees. She quietly tells him that they may not be able to go to the same college. Yesterday, her mother suddenly told her that she wants Liana to study abroad. The girl is worried because she already anticipated that when Seraphim's grades improve, they will be able to continue studying together. The young man was also alarmed by this news, but he tries to calm Liana down, saying that they will definitely come up with something. They both end up at a reception with Miss Devona Solis. Liana tries to start a conversation and addresses her as her aunt. Devona laughs because she allows herself to be called auntie, since she is not one of those old-fashioned mothers who forbids her child to date. In addition, she trusts her daughter, and it is immediately clear from Liana that this conversation is difficult for her. However, despite the fact that Miss Solis is not against their relationship, she still believes that first of all Liana needs to think about her future. Miss Devona has a goal. She wants to give her daughter the best education. Seraphim listens to her and analyzes the situation, because thanks to the system, the best education is now available to him. He is sure that no university can compare with it. But there is a problem. He cannot just go ahead and tell everyone else about it. And besides, he is afraid that no one will believe him. Auntie suggests that if Liana's boyfriend came here to convince her, then she is ready to listen to him. Seraphim supports her and asks his girlfriend to let him talk to her mother. He begins his conversation by understanding how Miss Devona is worried about her daughter, but he wants to know what she means by a good education. A diploma graduated with honors or a well-equipped, expensive campus. The aunt smiles and replies that she doesn't think this is the most important thing. She was interested in finding out what a good education includes, according to the young man. Seraphim enthusiastically shouts that this requires thinking people, masters of their craft. After all, they are the foundation of education, and in their country they can also get the best education. Devona, hearing his speech, clapped her hands, noting that it was all well said. She was directly amazed, but he still missed something. Seraphim realizes that he missed this important component, connections. The young man activated the ability to anticipate his opponent's action and received a rookie card. Devona confirms that everything, as he said, all the power is in the people, Miss inflicts four blows on all the opponent's followers. The woman notes that by keeping in touch with her college friends, it will be easier for them in the adult world. The opponent discards the harsh reality card and hits Seraphim's cards. The young man realizes that she has made a powerful code but accepts it. He turns to Devona and says that this may sound incorrect on his part, but he still wants to say that those who have power acquire connections. Maybe it's really important for some to make connections in college, but he and Liana don't need it. Miss Solis is funny. Usually those who are lower in status are afraid to even breathe next to her. For a long time she has not met such a young man as Seraphim. She notes that it is very rare for a high school student to show such courage. 
The young man even reminded her of himself in his youth. Liana is surprised by this behavior of her mother. She has never seen her like this. Seraphim is happy that it seems that his argument about the fact that strength is in people has found a response in the aunt's heart, and perhaps things are going well. And then an interesting thought occurs to him. He jumps up from the sofa and, turning to Devona, invites her to make a bet. Auntie decides to ground Seraphim a little, reminding him not to forget that he is still in school, and she doesn't want his impulse to affect his studies. Her hero promises that his studies will not suffer from this, because he wants to bet on his scores in the entrance exams. If he gets the maximum score, then she must promise that she will allow Liana to stay in China. If he does not succeed, then he will do whatever she wants. From such speeches, Devon was perplexed. She does not believe what the young man is saying. How can he get 750 points? He is clearly out of his mind. Seraphim admits that he understands that this is not at all easy, and no one has ever managed to get the highest score in the entrance exams. But if he is not able to do even this, then how can he consider himself worthy of Liana? How can he then have the courage to ask her to stay with him? Devona replies that at first Seraphim surprised her in a good way, but she did not expect that he would have such a high opinion of himself. But in the end she agrees to make a bet, but if he loses, then she will think whether he is worthy of her daughter. Liana tries to object to her mother, but Devona continues to be angry. She will not trust her daughter to such an egoist. Miss Devona stands up and replies that she is tired and asks her daughter to accompany Seraphim to the door. Liana is worried, but the young man asks her not to worry because he can convince her mother. And yet it was already late, and he was about to leave anyway. Heading towards the door, he realizes that he didn't think he would screw up like that. He blames the system and thinks that he will never forgive it for this. Suddenly, a mandatory task was given to bet Liana's mother for the highest score in the entrance exams. And if the task was failed, then Seraphim would be bullied at school because of his relationship with Liana and would also accept the punishment of brain cell processing and subsequent loss of interest in opposite field. During evening classes, Ian decided to ask Seraphim if he was too confident in himself, because only recently he took first place in the trial exam, and now with all his appearance he shows that he no longer needs to study. The main character asks him to think about what he is talking about. Seraphim reads the newspaper to increase his level of knowledge, his comrade asks him to stop bragging because reading the news will not help him in any way. Seraphim objects in order to get the highest score in the entrance exams. He needs to get 9 out of 10 points in other subjects, including essay writing. Already sitting in his room at night, a fairy suddenly appeared in front of the young man. He immediately decided to complain why she appeared only now. The creature clearly didn't like this. She doesn't want him to call the system stupid. Seeing the fairy's anger... The hero decides that it would be better for him to agree with her. But he really wants to find out what kind of task the system gave him. The fairy does not understand what he is talking about because additional information is not provided. But she told him that the system wouldn't give him a task that he couldn't handle. Seraphim couldn't believe his ears. Could he really get the highest score in the entrance exams? But the fairy decides it would be better to remind him. He recently won a basketball game and she is here to give him a reward. This news could not help but please Seraphim. If he was given a new skill, then it would not be surprising that the system assigned him such a strange task. As a result, the system revealed a skill to him, a master of calligraphy, but this is not what the young man expected, as it will help him pass the entrance exams better than anyone else. Sitting in class, he is confident that he can get the highest grade. The main thing is to write a good essay. Using his ability to get along with people, he must write a great essay that can resonate with people and make them feel the result he wants to achieve. Classes finally ended, and Ian decided to see if Seraphim wanted to play catch with him. Mr. Clive refuses the offer because today he wants to introduce Liana to his mother. Standing in front of the door, Liana admits to the guy that she is a little nervous. Seraphim tries to calm her down, saying that his mother is wonderful. He reminds him that he was not at all scared when he went to meet her mother. But their conversation is interrupted by the hero's mother, who suddenly opened the door. The son decides to introduce his girlfriend to her. This is Liana, about whom he talked a lot. Mother immediately thought about how pretty this girl was, and her eyes widened a little when she saw that her son and this girl were holding hands. She immediately picks up the girl and enthusiastically talks about how glad she is to meet her. 
and that her son is very lucky to study with such a wonderful classmate. Seraphim tensed a little, because he didn't remember the last time his mother was so delighted. Then the evening goes quite smoothly, they have a pleasant conversation over dinner. Seeing off the young people, Mother declares that she will again wait for Liana to come to visit again. She reminds Seraphim a little sternly to take the girl to the car. Liana is very happy about this evening. She admits that he feels so at ease the girl noticed that his mother is softer than hers. Seraphim is glad that his girlfriend liked it, and he invites her to come to them more often, and he will try to give his best. Liana laughs and asks what he is talking about. The young man replies that he will get the highest score in the entrance exam. A few months later, Evie Storr welcomes everyone to her broadcast and announces that today is the last day of the entrance exams. It demonstrates how many parents have gathered in the schoolyard. College entrance exams are truly a big event for every family. Evie was embarrassed by the reactions in the chat. Everyone sent her hearts and wrote that she was the best. Someone even asked her to marry him. Seraphim and Liana come into the frame. The girl immediately pays attention to them. Evie assumed that these two had already shot each other. She decides to greet them and find out how it went. After all, how did they cope so quickly there was still a whole hour left until the end of the exam? Seraphim admits to her that they simply wrote all the assignments and handed them in. Evie is shocked. She already thought that they were expelled from the exam for some kind of violation. The girl admits that it just rarely happens that students pass their entrance papers so quickly, and she wants to know how difficult the assignments were this year. The guys chuckle and answer that the questions were not particularly difficult. Seraphim suggested that he would probably have the highest score. Evie is shocked. She thinks he is joking. She decides to clarify whether he is sure that he was able to score the highest score in a foreign language. Seraphim decides to clarify. He means the highest score in all subjects. Evie thanks them for their comments and says that she will go and interview the rest of the guys. Having walked away a little, the girl exhales and thinks about what a strange guy he was. But this broadcast did not go unnoticed. Rumors about the arrogant young man had already spread online. Even the newspaper of the Livonian School published a story about a high school student shouting loud words, and this caused a wave of controversy. This news could not pass by the director, and he decided to call Seraphim. The director approached the young man and decided to say that the student was careless. He invites him to look at the news, which says that an interview at the Livonian school has led to a flurry of indignation. Netizens are heatedly discussing the pretentious and arrogant students of this school. Seraphim believes that reporters really know how to make mountains out of molehills. The director admits that if the matter concerned someone else, then there would be no problems. But it was Seraphim who came under attack, even though the exam results had not yet been announced, but he had already become famous throughout the Internet and he wants to know how the young man will now order to restore the reputation of the school. Seraphim asks him not to worry. Perhaps he didn't choose his words very well in the interview, but he spoke the truth. Their school will not have any problems. On the contrary, it will be in first place in the ratings. It was time to check the exam, and one of the examiners was amazed at the handwriting of one of the students. He was even more shocked by the fact that the exam was written without a single mistake. He even asked the manager to take a look at the essay. The head cannot believe his eyes. He does not believe in this unusual construction of phrases. He has never seen a high school student write such an essay. He understands that this is an unusual job. The student's ambition and life philosophy are visible in it. The supervisor declares that this work deserves the highest rating. The assistant wanted to object, but the head said that this would not be discussed. This work deserves better evaluation. And that's the end. A couple of days later, at the company where Miss Solis worked, employees began to discuss the fact that, according to insider information, as a result of this year's college entrance exams, one student scored the maximum number of points. The colleague does not believe this. She wants to know where the employee got such information. But he objected. Does it matter? In a few days, the results will be posted and the truth will be revealed. Miss Devona overheard this conversation and wondered if it could be about Seraphim Clive. Sitting on the sofa in the Solis family's living room, Liana is a little embarrassed, but Seraphim says that sooner or later it would have happened. He brings his face closer to the girl and asks her permission to begin. She agrees and the young man picking up the phone wants to see the results of the entrance exams, which have finally appeared in the public domain. 
Silence reigned in the room as Seraphim waited for the sight to load. Liana closed her eyes in fear. Miss Devona unexpectedly entered the house and announced from the threshold that she had received some news this morning. Liana immediately ran joyfully to greet her mother. Devona noticeably blushed when she saw Seraphim in the room as well. The young man also stood up to greet Miss Solis and apologized in advance for the disturbance. Liana happily tells her mother that they finally found out the exam results. Devona asked if the young man wanted to tell her something, and then Seraphim solemnly showed her the website page, which indicated that he had taken first place and scored the maximum number of points in the exam. After that, he hesitated a little, as he noticed that Devona was somehow not particularly surprised. But she already suspected in advance. As soon as she heard the conversation of her colleagues, she already knew who the winner was. She told Seraphim that today's news had already reported about a student who scored a record number of points in the exam. The young man didn't like this. These media didn't really let him breathe. Liana, a little afraid, asks her mother what she now wants to say about studying abroad. Devona, of course, allows her daughter to stay in China as she promised. Miss Solis was very surprised because the fact that Seraphim received the maximum score is amazing. But as it turned out, this was not enough to impress Miss Devona. What she really liked was that he showed courage and determination, as well as the ability to back up his words with actions. Approaching Seraphim, she pats him firmly on the shoulder and declares that from now on she trusts her daughter to him. The young man cannot help but rejoice. He confirms that she is entrusting her Liana to good hands. While the guys were happy that everything had worked out, Devona was already thinking that in a few years, the young man would stop calling her aunt. Liana could not resist and threw herself on Seraphim's neck, shouting that she was glad that they had managed it. But their rejoicing is interrupted by Miss Solis, who decides to tell her that the guys have to promise her something. She states that she doesn't want any grandchildren until after college. Liana and Seraphim immediately blushed. They did not believe that their aunt was telling them such things. Devona reminds them that they are still too young, and she doesn't want to become a grandmother before they graduate from college. Liana rushes to her mother again to hug her and ask her to stop talking about the topic of becoming a grandmother. Seraphim decides to intervene and asks Miss Solis not to worry. He promises that this will not happen. He and Liana will not go that far until they graduate from college. Devona says that he trusts the young people. If he was able to get the highest score in the entrance exams, then he must keep this promise. Seraphim made this promise and immediately began to hope that perhaps it would not be so difficult. At that moment, his mother called, and he immediately picked up the phone to answer her. Mother calls him because she has already received several calls from the admissions office of different universities. She is hesitantly trying to tell him about the exam scores. Hearing the hesitation in her voice, he decides to tell his mother the truth himself. What everyone is telling her about, she can be proud of her son, because he became the first in the ranking of students who passed the entrance exams. The mother cannot hold back her tears and even covers her mouth with her hand from such shock. She recalled how she saw her son sitting at books and studying from morning to night. Mother recalls that the last few months must have been very difficult for her boy. She could never have expected Seraphim to score a perfect score. His father would have been so proud of him. Her son reassures her, because in the future she will have even more reasons to be proud of him. Two days later, the young people met again in a more relaxed atmosphere. Seraphim immediately noted how good Liana looked. The girl was a little surprised to see her betrothed on a bicycle. Seraphim told her to jump onto the trunk and now they are already rushing down the street on this sunny day. While driving down the street, the young man thought about the fact that a few months ago everyone laughed at him and did not take him seriously. But now, when he and Liana walked past a group of students, no one laughed at him or said that he was not worthy of her. Liana decides to find out whether Seraphim has thought about where he will apply. The young man says that his mother supports his decision to go to the same place as his girlfriend. As soon as they approached one of the buildings, they suddenly saw that there were ribbons hanging on it with congratulations to Seraphim, a third-grade student at the Livonian school, who received the highest score in the entrance exams. Liana nudges him with your elbow, laughing at how pompously they congratulate him. Seraphim was suddenly pulled back by the director. He said that the young man had done a huge favor to the Livonian school. The main character even becomes a little embarrassed, and he tries to tell the director that this is not such a big event. 
but that was not the case. The entire teaching staff had already gathered to congratulate him. The young man becomes even more embarrassed. He does not know whether he is even worthy of such an honor. The principal announces that for his outstanding results in the entrance exams, the school has decided to give him a place on the honor board. Hearing this statement, all the teachers were a little shocked. Lucinda reflects on the fact that in the entire 40 years of the school's existence, only four people have had such an honor. This was awarded to a titan of the world of literature, an internet giant who built a career from scratch, a politician who contributed to the development of their country, and an academician who achieved high results in scientific activities. And now it's Seraphim's turn, and he's only 18 years old. Lucinda's head was filled with the thought of whether, at his age, he was already on the same level as such strong personalities. The teacher decides to check with the principal to see if this is too much of a reward. The director decides to ask her why the Wall of Honor is needed, and to demonstrate the greatness of their school or to encourage their future students to strive for excellence. For many years, their Wall of Honor has been a benchmark for social success, but those around them probably didn't realize that it was something of a forbidden fruit for students. If even such a brilliant student as Seraphim does not take his place on the wall, then will anyone else be able to do so? Teacher Lucinda, after thinking about it, came to the conclusion that all this sounded reasonable. In this case, the director declares that Seraphim Clive is worthy, is on the wall of honor. Everyone around him begins to applaud loudly, which makes the young man feel awkward. It seems to him that he cannot accept such an award. The director is trying to convince him, is it really possible that now everything he said here will be in vain? He decides to whisper in the student's ear that thanks to him, their school received a grant for a tidy sum. And plus, for everyone who is listed on the wall of honor, the grant amounts to an even larger amount of money. The main character was even speechless from such amounts. But at the same time, these speeches inspired Seraphim, and now he considers it his duty to serve as an example for other students. The director is happy because this is exactly the ambitious approach he expected from him. And the head of the school also said that Seraphim will need to do something later so he should be ready. He reports that the media wants to interview him so he must not let his alma mater down and perform well. The director heard that it would be broadcast live and would gather a lot of viewers in front of the screens because Seraphim was, after all, the first in the history of college entrance exams to receive the maximum score. Journalists have already gathered in the conference room. The first interview is with the director, who says that this year their school was once again able to achieve excellent results. Until Seraphim's turn comes, he is wondering how he can literally give a grant for such a large amount of money for nothing. Finally, the interviewer gets to him. She wants to know if he has anything to say to the younger generation. The young man immediately hesitated, because he couldn't say that they didn't have a system like his. Although in theory the system is only half the battle, he was able to achieve such results also thanks to the skills given to him. If you think about it, what helped him the most was that the tasks of the system were mandatory to complete. If he had not worked until he was exhausted every time, he would have been able to use his skills to the fullest. He is going to give one piece of advice and says that you should not be afraid to lose face. Seraphim knew that at first many people would laugh at him, and to be honest, he was a little scared. And he thought that if he didn't try, he wouldn't fail. He thought that people didn't even realize how often these words were repeated. Although they admit to liking a person, they are afraid to look him in the eyes. At the decisive moment, they are afraid to act, and they blame themselves for this. They are afraid of failing the exam, and so on. He believes that I need to get into the habit of telling myself that I am determined, which means I can do it. This way the goal will not seem so unattainable. Of course, he himself would not have achieved such a result without luck and the help of others. But he still wants to share something that will serve as a support for young people in the future. The secret is that he is not afraid to fall in the eyes of others. At this moment, many students were watching this live broadcast, and they listened carefully to what Seraphim was saying. Suddenly, the young man heard a strange notification from the system. She congratulated Seraphim. For the love of his fans, he received 10,000 points, and now the lottery has been successfully launched. While in his living room, the main character listened carefully to the fairy, who explained that he had one chance to win the lottery. She wants to know if he confirms the launch of the lottery. Seraphim happily agrees to this. 
The creature happily reports that the young man won the skill of a brilliant idea. The main character immediately became interested in what this skill entailed. The fairy explains that once physicists discovered the structure of the benzene ring and mathematicians built a regular pentagon. Nowadays, students understand all these things, but previously, these were real scientific discoveries, or, in other words, brilliant ideas. Seraphim is full of enthusiasm and wants to try out his new skill as soon as possible. The fairy leaves the young man alone with the tasks of the top five mathematical hypotheses. Seraphim gathers his strength and begins to activate the brilliant idea ability. Hours passed, and only in the evening he was able to finish his calculations a little. Suddenly someone knocked on the front door. My mother immediately entered the room because it was already five in the evening, and she had no idea who it could be behind the door since they were not expecting anyone. Seraphim already wanted to get up and open it himself, but his mother told him to continue studying, and she herself would open it and see who came to them. Opening the door, the woman saw a thin, tall man with glasses who was interested in whether Seraphim Clive lived here. The man decides to introduce himself. His name is Raj Gable. He is the chairman of the admissions committee of Anna University, and he would like to know which college Seraphim chose. The mother was speechless as to why the chairman of the admissions committee of Anna University came in person. She kindly invites Raj to come in, and the chairman has already seen this silent question in her eyes and hastened to answer that he is here in person because her son is a special applicant. And suddenly there was a knock on the door again. Another man stood in the threshold and asked if Seraphim Clive lived here. He came on behalf of the admissions committee of Taycock University. But when he saw Raja, the man's gaze immediately changed from friendly to angry. He launches an offensive and immediately wants to find out if he wants to lure Seraphim to his university. One might say he caught his colleague red-handed. Raj wanted to say something, but the enemy threw some papers at his feet. While Raj was looking at the papers, a representative from Tycock University addressed the young man's mother, introducing their university as the best in the country. They have the best campus and living conditions, and the teachers are simply unrivaled and it will be the best decision if the mother entrusts her son to them. Raj hears out of the corner of his ear that his rival promises that if Seraphim chooses their university, then his scholarship will be 300,000 yuan. The representative had already handed the mother the documents, saying that only a couple of signatures were required from her. Raj can no longer give up his position, and he grabs Seraphim by the shoulders and says that if his choice falls on Anna University, then he will personally order that the young man receive a scholarship worth millions of yuan. The opponent froze in amazement when he heard how much scholarship his opponent offered. Raj continues to press the young man. If he is not satisfied with this amount, then he can offer his own. And in general, if he enters Anna University, he can ask him for anything. Seraphim finally managed to say that, in fact, he and his girlfriend decided to enter the same university. Raj begins to talk about how his girlfriend will be able to choose any direction, and studying for a master's degree will be free for them, and they will also be able to accommodate them in the same dormitory, and that regarding her scholarship, they will also be able to agree. Raj's rival is simply indignant. He asks his colleague if they even have the right to do this. The top best include dozens of students in the country, and they cannot afford to pay such scholarships to everyone. Raj has already decided everything for himself. He has an assumption that if he does not hold this child by all means, he risks never knowing what kind of genius he missed. Already on the plane, Seraphim told Liana about how the face of the representative of the admissions committee at Taycock University turned green when he heard Raj's conditions. Two months ago, university representatives showed up at Seraphim's house and wanted to know where he was applying. The young man awkwardly admitted that his girlfriend had already chosen Anna University, so he would go there too. Raj immediately began to sneer at his rival, who after these words offered the young man anything to change his mind. But there was nothing to be done. The representative of Taycock University had to pack his suitcase and leave, saying that he did not lose to Raju, but was simply unlucky this time. Mother Seraphima continued to be in a state of shock. She did not believe that her son had just been invited to study at one of the best universities in the country. But in the end, the main character was glad that he and Liana entered Anna University together. The girl admitted to him that she could not believe that they had achieved their goal together. She thought to herself, 
Although she always believed in Seraphim, his grades were not so good before. Sometimes it even begins to seem to her that he has become a completely different person. At this time, they finally began to distribute lunch throughout the plane, which the young man was very happy about, as he was quite hungry. Liana, seeing how her betrothed was crushing another bun, laughed loudly. Seraphim wanted to know why she laughed, but the girl said there was nothing wrong with it. He was just the same and hadn't changed a bit. Suddenly, the young people also heard laughter coming from the next row. Liana turned to see who was laughing, too, and saw that a pretty blonde was winking at her. Mrs. Solis didn't understand why this girl looked as if she knew them. Seraphim noticed Liana's worried look and decided to find out what happened. Liana told him to look at the girl next to them because she was so beautiful. Even Mrs. Solis herself was amazed by it. In addition, Liana noticed that the young lady was looking at Seraphim and smiling. The young man thinks that this is all nonsense and perhaps she just made her laugh at the way he ate. Finally, the plane arrived in Kyoto. The chairman of the admissions committee had already arrived there to meet the students. Raj greets the guys, and then Liana and Seraphim, greeting the chairman, notice that they are not alone. The same girl from the plane was next to them, and she also greeted Raj. The young people were surprised to realize that perhaps this girl would study with them. The chairman states that it is a great honor for Anna University that three of the best students in the province are admitted to them at once. Seraphim analyzes the situation. If the three best students entered, the first is him, the third is Liana. This means that the stranger is the second student to score the highest score in the entrance exams. The girl happily reports that she is glad to finally meet him. She heard about the guys, and today she finally saw her for the first time. The stranger finally introduced herself. Her name is Taylor Locke. She and Seraphim shake hands and promise that they will learn from each other. The young man does not understand why he has the feeling inside that this girl is up to something bad. The chairman decides that since everyone has already met, they can go to the university and takes the guys to the car. Seeing this car, Seraphim was simply delighted. It seems to him that Anna University's approach to its students is even better than he expected. Suddenly he heard Taylor laugh behind him. She said that every year the best students enter Anna University. But for the first time in history, a high school student managed to get the highest score. The girl suggests that probably it was given to her from above to meet such a genius as Seraphim. The chairman urges them on, saying that he himself will help them with their luggage, and for now they can get settled in the car. He reminds them that they will have to fill out a lot of paperwork before registering. Raj, loading his suitcases into the car, thinks that they usually don't rush around like this with the best graduates. But Seraphim is a different matter. He is simply a mathematical genius, since he was able to solve the top five most difficult hypotheses. Only such a brilliant student is worthy of being welcomed by Anna University with all honors. The young man thinks that it's cool that they will be given a ride by car, and they don't have to get there themselves like the rest of the freshmen do. Liana decides to ask Taylor how many points she scored on the entrance exam. Hearing the answer, at 736, Liana was sincerely surprised and considers it an annoyance. Taylor chuckles and says that there is nothing wrong with that. If there is a ten-point difference between her and Seraphim, she is still no match for him. Seraphim chuckles because between her and Liana, the difference is generally four points. The chairman wants to know which profile the best graduate has decided to choose. Students usually make decisions before applying, but Anna University has made an exception for this. Seraphim replies that he thought about it and decided to go with Liana to the Faculty of Foreign Languages. Raj almost slammed on the brakes from shock. Did the young man really not want to enter the Faculty of Mathematics? But he calms down and says that if he doesn't have any special preferences, then of course any direction will do, but he still advises him to use his strengths. Seraphim doesn't care about anything. He can choose anything because he has a system. The young man notices that, most likely, the chairman saw his calculations, and that is why he so badly wants him to enter the faculty of mathematics. Seraphim doesn't want to seem impudent, but does Raj really think that the math teachers still have something to teach him? These words made the chairman think because the young man himself solved those most difficult problems. Even none of the current professors could do this. But he doesn't give up and tells the student that they can still provide him with a good base. Seraphim replies that even if he chooses the mathematics department, he thinks that the undergraduate course will be a waste of time for him, and the rest of the students may be unhappy with his presence. 
But still the hero decided that he would study English, and if he suddenly had problems solving problems, he hoped that the mathematics teachers would be able to help him. Raj laughs and replies that let it be as Seraphim wants, because all roads will be open to him. Finally they arrived at the right place. Getting out of the car, they saw a luxurious campus. The chairman announces to them that while the students are moving into the dormitory, he will register them. Liana and Taylor go to the women's dormitory. Mrs. Solis says goodbye to her boyfriend, offering to meet after that and have lunch together. The young man, of course, agrees. Seraphim cannot believe that the university life he has been waiting for so long has finally begun. Entering the dorm room number 400, the three heroes saw their new neighbors. He was noticed and greeted by a thin, friendly boy named Daniel Pham and a funny, fat guy named Tyler Dench. And the last one to greet him was a handsome young man, saying that he was just in time because there was only one free place left. Seraphim introduces himself to them and shakes everyone's hands as a greeting. The last neighbor introduces himself to him as Philip Prince and says that they were just deciding who would be in charge of the room. Daniel immediately decided to speak out that he believes that the one who is older should be in charge. Tyler thinks it's too easy and maybe they should do it differently. He wants to suggest choosing a boss based on the number of points scored in the exam. Daniel didn't particularly like his proposal, so there was a nervous tension in the room. Tyler is simply sure that his neighbors couldn't do better than him, and he is the first to decide to say that he scored 707 points. Daniel laughed in his neighbor's face as his result was 708 points. Philip decides to interrupt his neighbors and report that he scored 716 points. The guys had already thought that this was the winner in front of them. The neighbors finally decide to find out how many points their last moving tenant has. Seraphim turned and casually said that he received 750 points in the entrance exams. But he immediately warns that he doesn't care who will be in charge. Tyler doesn't believe the young man's words and asks him to tell the truth about the points. But Seraphim again replies that he is not lying. If they do not believe, they can check it on the internet. The results are in the public domain. Daniel whispers to the other neighbors that what their neighbor is saying is simply impossible. All three guys crowded around the phone to verify the veracity of Seraphim's words, and to their surprise, they were convinced that the young man had told them the truth. They can't believe that a genius has been assigned to them. Tyler immediately decided to return to the concept of choosing a leader based on age. Suddenly, Seraphim received a notification on his phone. It was Liana. He saw her from the window and shouted for her to wait until he came down. The roommates also wanted to see who came to visit their genius. The boys, seeing Liana, immediately began to call her cutie and assumed that she was probably the first beauty of the school. Tyler wanted to know what kind of relationship Seraphim and Liana were in. The main character proudly declares that this is his girlfriend, and he invites the guys if they want to go and have dinner with them. Philip also cannot believe that these young people are dating, so he decides to clarify this again. Hearing once again confirmation that Liana is his neighbor's girlfriend, Philip declares Seraphim to be in charge of their room. The rest of the guys also agree with this. They have already even announced that they are now a family and there should be no secrets between them. The main character experiences a feeling of awkwardness. He does not understand what secrets are being discussed. It turns out that his neighbors want to know his secret ways to pick up girls. Seraphim suggests that they first go down and have dinner together. Once outside, the guys see that Liana has brought with her several more attractive girls. Daniel immediately wants to apply all his vibes to attract the lady. But his attention is drawn to Tyler, who introduces himself with excitement. He blushes very much. Taylor didn't even really pay attention to them, and immediately turned to Seraphim with the question of when they would go eat. The young people were very upset that their efforts went unnoticed. Philip's heart did not care about Taylor at all. The object that interested him was a little behind, and he immediately decided to act. He greets the girl, introduces himself, and says that he came here from the capital. Liana, looking at this picture, decided to tell Seraphim that he seemed to have interesting neighbors. This makes the young man feel awkward, and he offers to quickly find them a place where they can have a bite to eat. As a result, they came to a cafe that served fairly hot snacks and soups. Seraphim immediately considered them perverts because of this, because they chose a place that served hot food. They probably wanted to look at the girls whose cheeks were flushed with heat and their breathing quickened. 
But Seraphim is distracted from these thoughts by Liana, who hands her beloved a piece of meat. At the table, Philip decides to tell them that their school year will begin with military training. He even heard that the instructors will be especially strict this year, so they need to be careful. The girls were immediately frightened by such news because they are afraid of military training. Their delicate skin will definitely tan in the sun. Philip explains that this is the reason they need to prepare for this. He and the boys have just saved a set of special training sessions that they will happily share with them. The girls are happy and decide to ask Liana whether to add them to the general chat. But the girl, to everyone's surprise, replies that this is not necessary. Seraphim supports her words and asks not to add him to this chat either. The guys want to immediately find out why, and the young man admits that he and the girl are not obliged to attend these classes. The others are shocked and cannot believe that these students are exempt from military training. Philip replies that he is from the capital, but he has not heard that at Anna's university, they give concessions to anyone, even to the children of influential parents. Seraphim replies that this may be so, but they lost to them because of high scores. The guys didn't even think that points could play such a big role. The girls remember hearing from the news about a student who scored the maximum score in an exam. But one of them still decides to clarify that perhaps they meant a score for one subject, and not for the entrance exams as a whole. But Seraphim's neighbors confirm that he received the highest score in all subjects, and they can even check this on the internet. And Philip at this time became sad, because he understands that now, no matter what the situation is, against the background of his neighbor, a genius, he will always look like a minor character. Already in the evening the guys are talking in the room, and Daniel says that he cannot believe that there are so many beautiful girls in their class. Tyler asks Seraphim to let Liana introduce him better to the girl in their company today. Daniel pushes his friend away and asks Liana to help him and bring him together with the girl he likes. Seraphim decides to bring them back to reality, because they have known the girls for less than a day, as they generally imagine. Philip suggests creating a joint chat and just adding girls there. The main character is surprised, because it seems that they should have a class chat, and he thinks that they will deal with him tomorrow in class. Philip convinces him that this is not what they need. Their chat will only be them and the girls. Seraphim chuckles, because now he understands what they are driving at, and he decides to clarify all the details with Liana. Ultimately, a chat is created, and young people begin to correspond about everything, sharing their impressions of the first day. Philip even began to think that the girl he liked liked him. Seraphim is trying to fall asleep and simply assents to his friend so that everyone falls asleep faster. Even if the neighbors agree with the main thing in the room, they decide to correspond with the girls a little more. The next day, at the beginning of classes, all the eyes of the male part of the team were focused on Liana. The young men had already begun to argue about who would approach her first. At this time, Seraphim enters the class and, noticing the young man, the girl immediately greets him and calls him to her. This causes indignation among the guys. They don't understand why the hell this goddess is with some stranger. Tyler, hearing this, warns them, saying that this girl is already taken. The guys can't believe it. They're already crying and saying that now they won't be able to love again. Suddenly, Taylor walked into the classroom, looking at ease. And then all the guys' attention immediately turned to her. They immediately tried to get her to sit at a desk with one of them. But ironically, the girl sat down next to Seraphim, which surprised the young man a little. The students again did not like that another beauty sat with this, in their opinion, loser. Seraphim wants to know why the girl sat with him because the class is full of empty seats. Taylor wonders why she can't sit here. Mr. Clive wonders if she feels these murderous glances directed at him. The girl admits that seriously she just wanted to ask him for one favor. Taylor admits that she does not want to undergo military training and wants Seraphim to ask the chairman to exempt her from this training. She asks the young man to promise her that he can get her out of military training, and in that case she will change seats. But Seraphim wants to know why she doesn't ask Chairman Raj about it herself. But the girl doesn't seem to hear him and simply joyfully says that she is counting on Mr. Clive. Liana did not like these speeches and the structure of her eyes. She simply looked at the girl with a murderous gaze. But she didn't have time to say anything to her opponent, since Taylor had already gotten up and gone to another desk. The guys in the class couldn't be happier, because they understand that they again have the opportunity to meet a beauty and even sit at the same desk with her. 
Tyler almost cried because he managed to believe that his neighbor was dating two girls at once. The teacher finally entered the classroom and greeted all the students. Now the attention of the male half of the class turned to the teacher. The teacher greeted them again and introduced herself as Faya Crisp, and she would be teaching them a foreign language. She stated that she wanted the students to get to know each other better and get a little used to the new stop. The teacher wants everyone to introduce themselves and tell them a little about themselves. One of the students is fully confident that he has the best passing grade among applicants. The choice of this faculty was influenced by the fact that there are many girls here, and he can easily find her here. The young man solemnly stands up and introduces himself by the name of Mike Vaugh. He is the fourth in the ranking among those who passed the entrance exams in the province. He declares that if anyone has difficulties in their studies, they can safely contact him. He continues to talk about how he also wants to play basketball, and he also has an interest in music, so he would like to join a music club. At first there was silence in the class, as everyone just thought that the young man had come here to show off. But then, one after another, the students also began to stand up and introduce themselves. Mike didn't like that his classmates didn't admire him, but he understands that they are just jealous of him. He doesn't care because he already found a goal that he wanted to conquer. It turned out to be Taylor. The girl stands up and greets the class, saying how pleased she is to meet everyone. Since the girl immediately sat down after this phrase, the teacher decided to continue for her, saying that Taylor had an impressive passing grade, thanks to which she took second place among the applicants. Her classmates like this, because the girl turns out not to be arrogant or arrogant at all, not like some who took only fourth place and immediately gave up their tails. Finally, it was Liana's turn. The girl also simply greeted everyone and sat down in her place. Here the teacher also had to intervene, saying that this girl had an excellent result. She took third place this year at the entrance exams. The young people were delighted again. They obviously like beautiful and modest girls. And now it's Seraphim's turn. He introduces himself and says that most likely he gave up all his luck for this moment. He even mentions his hobby, basketball, and generally says that he's glad to meet you. The teacher is already deciding and does not miss the opportunity to say that Seraphim became the first among applicants in terms of admission scores. And he is also the one who received the highest score for the first time in the entire history of the exam. So she would like to nominate Seraphim for the post of head of their group. Mike could not restrain himself and began to freak out. He is furious because he does not understand why such a person did not go somewhere to the Faculty of Information Technology or Finance. At the same time, Chairman Raj was talking with his colleagues. They were just discussing a student who easily solved complex mathematical problems and at the same time chose the Department of Foreign Languages. After class, Liana and Seraphim decided to take a walk. The girl congratulated him on his post as headman. But the young man is afraid that this is not his because he has never had experience in such a matter. Liana laughs and infects him with her laughter. She says that there is nowhere to go, and the young man promises her to try. In fact, Seraphim wants to know what his girlfriend thinks about Taylor and what Liana would do in his place. Liana admits that at first Taylor seemed nice to her, but then she began to behave very strangely. The young man notices that his girlfriend clearly dislikes her and immediately offered to refuse their friend's help. But Mrs. Solis decides that since they are all from the same province, they should help each other. Seraphim accepts her offer and decides to go to the chairman. Liana throws herself into the guy's arms, talking about how kind he is to her. Noticing the teachers in the distance, Seraphim suddenly heard an interesting conversation. One of the teachers was heatedly arguing with others about the fact that the wood conjecture is one of the five most difficult mathematical problems in the world. Raj objected. He understands that the teacher takes everything that concerns his subject seriously, and that is why this fact worries him so much, but it calls into question his professionalism. The professor simply doesn't understand why such a gifted boy didn't choose the mathematics department. Maybe he just doesn't want others to know about his abilities. The chairman states that he could not force the student to choose something he did not like. The teacher is already losing his temper and shouts that Raj may be conspiring with a genius, and he hopes that the chairman is fully aware of how this could affect the prestige of their university. Raj asks Mr. Carlos to watch his speech in the presence of Mr. Shelby, and as for Seraphim, the head replies that a student like him, on the contrary, only increases the authority of their university. The chairman notices Seraphim standing at a distance. 
The young man awkwardly greets them and says that he was looking for Raj to talk about combat training and asks for a moment of his attention. But the angry teacher asks not to distract them and immediately tell them why he came here. Seraphim admits that he wants one more person to be freed from these activities. Mr. Carlos does not hold back and again starts shouting and scolds the young man since he had the conscience to ask for such favors. The chairman picks up the boy and asks him to come to him later. And only now did it dawn on Carlos that this was the very student they were arguing about. He snatches the young man from Raj's hands and, leading him along, menacingly declares that today he will find out what this mathematical genius is really capable of. The chairman was not pleased with this circumstance, because Professor Carlos is known for his tenacity. Now he will not let Seraphim go down. Raj turns to Mr. Shelby, as they must make sure that everything goes well, but his colleague objects, if this boy is really as good as they say, then there is no need to be afraid of verification. In addition, Seraphim's scores in the entrance exams confirm this. He calls the chairman over, saying that he still has a lot of important things to do. Raj begins to worry a little. He mentally asks the young man to try not to anger Mr. Carlos even more. Meanwhile, the teacher has already come to the student's office. He asks Seraphim to sit in a chair and explain to him the wood hypothesis. The main character does not understand what is wrong with this old man. Is it possible to be somehow more respectful with the student? Finally, the teacher handed him a piece of paper for the solution, and at that moment, Seraphim began to look at the more detailed room. He suggests that Carlos is most likely a famous scientist who devoted his entire life to science and work for the good of the country. Well, be that as it may, now Mr. Clive decides to show him everything he can do. After some time, the professor began to check the assignment and could not believe his eyes. A moment later, the chairman, who was walking along the corridor with Mr. Shelby, decided to knock on Carlos's office to check how things were going. Entering the office, they could not believe their eyes. The once formidable professor smiled sweetly and talked with Seraphim. They heard him offer the young man to become his student. It turns out that Carlos may not only be a cold iceberg. The professor decided to share the news with Jack Stills that he had a student with great promise. At such a young age, he was already able to solve five of the world's toughest problems, and Carlos considers himself very lucky to have agreed to learn from him. He even believes that such a wonderful student needs a careful approach. Jack didn't particularly like hearing from this old man only about Seraphim for half an hour. The young man is also a student of Carlos, and right now his nerves were giving way. He could no longer complete his work calmly in such an environment. But he still decides to ask the professor whether it is possible to solve five complex problems so easily and quickly. The young man believes that it is worth making sure that their solution is correct, just in case. Carlos notes that Jack even made him doubt. Some of the evidence he gave actually showed him to be a little inaccurate. And perhaps he'd go down to the lab and use the main computer to check some data. Jack asks to volunteer to try it himself. Carlos, of course, agrees, because Miss Hazel works in the laboratory with whom his student is in love. He allows Jack to carry out calculations on his behalf. Only the young man must wait for the professor to write a letter, and he also asks him to keep everything said now between them. If there really are inaccuracies in Seraphim's argumentation, then this situation could have a bad impact on his reputation. He may be criticized in the future, so he must ensure that no problems arise. Jack doesn't stop getting angry. He doesn't understand why the professor keeps talking about Seraphim. The young man thinks whoever it is doesn't deserve any of his respect, and he won't let it get in his way. Walking into the computer lab, Jack greets Miss Hazel. Students who are there also note that Miss Hazel Grace is the most talented girl at Anna University. She is in her early 20s, and she is already very famous internationally. Only now they are wondering what kind of guy came and everything is rubbing around her. Jack introduces himself to Miss Hazel and says that he is here on behalf of Professor Carlos. He wants to use the main computer. After looking at the papers, the girl was surprised to see information about the Wood Hypothesis. Perhaps the professor managed to prove it. But after looking at the papers more closely, she realized that this theory was proven by Seraphim Clive. Jack didn't like that she mentioned his rival's name out loud. Hazel chuckles and replies that she didn't think that Professor Carlos, who had been avoiding email, claiming that figuring out how it worked was too much of a hassle, would ever decide to get serious about promoting his student. The student also laughs and replies that as far as he knows, there are still some doubts about Seraphim. 
It is said that he deliberately chose the foreign languages department instead of the mathematics department because he falsified his exam results out of fear that his deception would be discovered. Jack laughs and declares that he personally does not suspect him in any way. All these are rather just rumors and in fact Seraphim is smart and talented. Hazel really didn't like this suggestion. This is the first time Professor Carlos's student has been revealed to be a fraud, and she believes that this letter is clearly unlikely to be genuine. Jack is jubilant. He managed to outwit the girl and not allow Seraphim to get around him. He can hope for a draw. Moreover, Jack will not allow him to take even second place. He even wants to tell the International Mathematics Group about his opponent's cheating. Jack believes that Seraphim will face such shame that he never dreamed of. At the same time, the men's dormitory is undergoing general cleaning. Tyler and Daniel quarreled while cleaning up, and Seraphim, noticing this, ordered them to stop, because the sooner they finished cleaning, the sooner they would go to dinner. Philip supports the head of the room and also tells the guys to do everything as the eldest said. His roommates turned to look at him and began to glare at him, causing goosebumps to run down Philip's body. Daniel and Tyler abruptly began pointing their fingers at him and shouting to Seraphim that Philip had just laughed at him. The young man wants to know why they are turning all the arrows on him, because he didn't mean anything like that. Seraphim decided to ask the guys why they had been acting strange since he returned to the dorm. Philip assumes that they are trying to please Seraphim in order to get closer to Taylor. The guys immediately began to deny that this was all nonsense, and they simply respected their boss. Philip notes that one way or another, there are those who are not happy that it was Mr. Clive who took the post of head of the group, and now they must be throwing mud at Seraphim behind his back. Mr. Prince is even interested in hearing what his neighbor thinks about this. But the main character doesn't care. He believes that let them think what they want. The guys are shocked that this does not upset the young man, because criminals can ruin his reputation. Seraphim believes that so be it. Their words mean nothing to him. He will just try to be a good headman, because isn't that the most important thing? Philip believes that this is probably how the thinking of a strong person works, and this is what the boss convinced him. Daniel and Tyler think their boss is cool, and I think that no evil thoughts will work against him. Unexpectedly, Seraphim received a message from Taylor, reminding her of her request to be excused from military training classes. Then Mr. Clive's nerves gave way. This girl seemed to be mocking him. At the same time, Hazel finished checking and asked the laboratory assistant to tell Professor Carlos that the verification calculations were completed. The young man decided to ask what kind of calculations they were. The girl admits that these are calculations that prove the Wood hypothesis and they are correct. The laboratory assistant is shocked by what her colleague just said, because isn't the Wood hypothesis one of the most difficult problems in the world? Miss Grace became angry and said that if she were him, she would not keep the professor waiting. While the laboratory assistant took off running, she thought that whoever the guy who managed to solve this serious hypothesis was, she couldn't believe that with such talent, he didn't even try to apply for physics. But if what Jack said is true, then he acted dishonestly, he falsified the exam results. Six hours later, Professor Carlos called Seraphim with him. He wants to show the student the most advanced computer in all of China, so that in the future he can use it to check his calculations. But this is only one of the reasons why they are here. The second is that he wants to introduce him to one of the young geniuses of their university. Entering the office, they are already greeted by the joyful Miss Hazel. Seeing the young man next to Carlos, she asked who it was. Seraphim introduced himself to her and said that he had heard a lot about how the professor described the brilliant mind of Miss Grace. But Hazel's reaction was only cold. She said that he had not yet had time to act, but was already trying to gain everyone's trust. Not paying attention to the shocked faces of the men, the girl handed the professor the calculations on the Wood hypothesis and said that they gave her a couple of thoughts. Carlos doesn't understand what's happening because Hazel has never behaved so rudely before, but he pushes these thoughts away from himself and carefully looks at the calculations. And suddenly he joyfully shows these sheets to Seraphim, telling him to look. Hazel begins to get even angrier because she does not understand why the professor is showing these papers to the young man. Seraphim is persistently trying to understand why the girl was so mad at him, but suddenly his thoughts switch to something else. He received a new task from the system. 
The young man thought about it, because Professor Carlos respects Miss Hazel very much, so he needs to establish a relationship with her. But first he must upset her slightly. And then, out of the blue, he points his finger at the calculations and tells the professor that there is an incorrect equation here. The girl becomes wildly furious and is ready to attack the student with her fists. But Carlos slows her down and tells her that there really is a mistake. He asks her to take a closer look at the third line of the calculations. Seraphim reports that he is afraid that the overall concept presented by Miss Grace is not fully thought out, and it is better to choose a different direction. The sun had already begun to set behind the horizon when the professor shouted, Bravo and Hazel was amazed because she did not expect such suitable proposals from Seraphim. The young man laughs and admits that he was just inspired. Miss Grace bows her head to him and asks for forgiveness because there was a misunderstanding between them and she should not have doubted him. However, she has one question. Why does he allow such talent to waste in foreign language? and she invites him to move to physics and mathematics because he doesn't want his school years to be wasted. But before answering, Seraphim wants to know what university means to a girl like her. Hazel replies that for her, a university is one of the stages of the educational system. Mr. Clive believes that the essence of a university is not one thing, but several components, such as professors, laboratories, and more. He wants to say that choosing a faculty is not the end point of his studies. He can study any subjects he wants. Otherwise, there would be no such thing as an interdisciplinary subject. But Miss Grace thinks the first thing he needs to do is have a clear idea of what he wants to do. Seraphim admits that he entered the Faculty of Foreign Languages only because he wanted to be close to the person dear to him. Yes, they are students and it is important for them to get a good education, but first of all, they are people who have feelings. After all, if it were not for his family and friends, he would not have been able to advance so far. It was thanks to Liana that he began to work hard and achieved what he has in terms of education. Carlos also decided to reassure Hazel, saying that of course he could not say that he agreed with all of Seraphim's words, but he reminded him of what he himself had long wanted to tell her. After all, for the last six months she has almost been living in the laboratory, and she has not been home or called her parents for a long time. Sometimes too much mental stress can be detrimental to your thought flow, Taking breaks will help your mind become more flexible. The girl noticeably cheered up and stated that she never thought that Seraphim could teach her anything. Sitting in his dorm room, the young man receives a notification from the system stating that he has completed his mission, and now he is wondering what reward awaits him this time. His reward was called Fiery Eyes. Seraphim became very curious about what this skill meant. At the same time, Jack was walking around the laboratory, and he heard out of the corner of his ear how the students were discussing that one of the new students had proven a complex hypothesis. He was tense at this news, but all his thoughts disappeared when he saw Miss Grace on his way. He immediately noted that he did not often see her outside the laboratory. The girl admits that she decided to follow the advice of Professor Carlos and Seraphim to see how rest would affect the flexibility of the mind. The young man does not understand what happened and why Miss Grace is behaving so strangely. He decides to find out if she has already met Seraphim Clive because he warned her that he cannot be trusted. Jack is afraid that he cheated into entering the university and who knows what else he might do. Hazel's face changed sharply and asked Jack not to talk about Seraphim like that because he turned out to be a great boy. She apologizes and says that she wants to continue the walk. Seeing how the object of his desires leaves, Jack begins to get angry. He wanted to be gentle with Seraphim, after all. They study at the same university, but now he left him no choice. At the same time, Mr. Clive decided to try out his new ability and placed two cards face down on the table in front of him. To his surprise, looking at them, he was able to see what kind of card it was, its value and suit. It turns out fiery eyes. This is X-ray vision. He asks his roommate to help him and tells him to sit next to him. Seraphim wants Tyler to turn his back on him and shuffle the cards. Tyler doesn't understand what they want from him and wonders if his neighbor is perfecting some kind of magic trick. But he still does everything as he was told and shows Seraphim the cards. Having looked closely, the young man gives the answer that the two of diamonds is on the left and the three of crosses is on the right. Tyler thinks it's incredible and wants to know how his neighbor did it. The young man is trying to understand whether Seraphim simply made notes on the maps. The main character already realizes that this ability can be a good help to him. 
In the midst of learning about his new ability, he receives a call from Professor Carlos. Having picked up the phone, a cry came from there, which said that Seraphim should come to the professor as soon as possible, because he had urgent business with him. Some anonymous person accused him of academic fraud, and now an international delegation is coming to them to clarify the circumstances. Carlos warns that the members of this delegation are very serious. They do not care whether he was able to prove the Wood hypothesis or not. For some reason, they are sure that Seraphim passed off other people's notes as his own. Jack started all this, as it is not difficult to understand. He wants the young man to disgrace himself tomorrow in front of all members of the Mathematical Society of China. Scientists around the world can be divided into four classes. First-class scientists are those whose achievements are limited to mastering a certain set of knowledge. The most they can achieve is to obtain a few patents for inventions, but there are those who believe that such people do not deserve an academic degree. Second-class scientists make revolutionary discoveries and try to find explanations for ambiguous phenomena. Their scientific articles are published in prestigious journals. Third-class scientists are one step away from reaching the frontier of human knowledge. Their skills are enough to organize a whole set of theories and ideas, which can then be passed on to the younger generation. Fourth-class scientists are able to introduce to humanity a new field that goes far beyond the limits of knowledge, which is necessarily recognized by all other scientists on Earth. Today there are no more than a hundred fourth-class scientists in total. Finally, the international delegation arrived in the main conference room. Mr. Shelby whispers to Miss Hazel that someone reported that China proved the Wood hypothesis. The girl is indignant because they did it on purpose. And besides, the person who sent the anonymous statement is one of the few trusted persons with whom they shared the secret. She realizes that not many people knew about the proof of the hypothesis, and she seems to have an idea who it could be. The delegation is talking to each other. One of the members is called Tom. He is a second-class scientist from the Kingdom of Starbast. A third-grade scholar named Mott from the Sakura Kingdom talks to him. Mott begins to say that he himself recently completed his latest developments regarding one hypothesis. One of the professors screamed when she heard this. She wanted to find out whether Motu had managed to prove the second most complex hypothesis of the world. The scientist, laughing, hands out sheets of paper with his findings for everyone to look at. Tom finds his colleague's progress encouraging and says he thinks it will take him a week to complete the hypothesis. Mott claps his hands to get everyone's attention and declares that he has a great idea on how to make their meeting even more effective. As everyone present looks at that boy named Seraphim Clive, look at his notes and try to carry them to their logical conclusion within two hours. Hazel enters into a debate. She does not understand what this madman is talking about because this is a completely different hypothesis that requires a different solution. But Mott calmly declares that if the young man fails, he will call into question the reputation of the entire university. Suddenly, Seraphim enthusiastically declares that he is ready to try. Hazel was surprised that after all this, he was still ready to try, because the complexity of the XE hypothesis is world-class. It is impossible to solve it in an hour. Seraphim understands that the old man from Sakura wants to destroy the image of the Chinese academic community, and he simply must stop him. Mott greets the young man and asks if he is ready to speak on behalf of the entire academic community of China. Professor Carlos is a fourth-class scientist, and he shouts to his ward to do everything for the honor of their country. The young man looks at the sheets of paper and uses his skill called brainstorming. Meanwhile, Mott decides to ask Miss Grace if she would like to transfer to Sakura University with them. After all, less than two hours are left before the reputation of Anna University is destroyed, their status will be questioned, and it will be difficult to find a new job abroad. Hazel was about to say a few kind words to this scientist, but Seraphim restrained her. He reports that they have nothing to worry about. They will not cause them problems, because the young man has already found a solution to the XE conjecture. Teachers are perplexed, because only a few minutes have passed, during which time the student usually does not even have time to solve the algebra problem. Seraphim cheerfully declares that, nevertheless, it only took him about a couple of minutes to figure out this clumsy decision. None of the delegation can believe his words. All this is starting to anger them. Throwing the papers on the table, Seraphim declares that he has an idea on how to simplify the proof of this hypothesis. He decided to deviate from the method presented by Mr. Mott. 
He asks everyone present to pay attention to the board. Mott cannot tolerate such impudence. Slamming his palm on the table, he says that he will look at the shame of this young man. Mr. Clive continues, firstly, he shows the new formula. Next, he paints almost the entire board and at the same time explains everything. Showing what result he managed to achieve, his method of solution turned out to be much easier and more effective. During his explanation, Mott broke out in a cold sweat. He simply did not believe in everything that was happening around him. This simply cannot be. Can it really be that at such a young age, Seraphim has already reached the level of a fourth-grade scientist? Professor Carlos even began to clap his hands, declaring that they, scientists, do not create a stir around their ideas, but calmly move towards the goal. The formula for calculating the sum of numbers was created by Gauss at the age of 10, and at 24 he proved the regular heptagon theorem. By this he wants to say that true geniuses begin to show their potential in their youth. Seraphim decides to approach Mr. Motu and ask him to remind him what he was talking about. But he did not let him speak, but repeated that Mott was sure that in two hours, the reputation of the Chinese academic society would be completely ruined. Seraphim is afraid that the scientist was mistaken, and that here and now it is not China but Sakura who will face humiliation. Professor Carlos intervenes in the conversation, he is of course on the side of his ward, but decides to remind him that he is still just a student. And Professor Mott is higher in status than him, so he must respect what he does and says. The scientist understands that he was humiliated in front of the members of the international delegation. He thinks that everyone will now laugh at him. They had already started talking behind his back, discussing that they didn't think anyone could prove the XE hypothesis in such a short time. Tom believes that this is a turning point for the entire world of mathematics. His colleague supports him and believes that he needs to quickly tell others about it. Mott stands on the sidelines and thinks that he is a loser, and now he will never regain his former respect because a new star has appeared that has eclipsed him with its radiance. The next day, Jack, walking around campus, again heard about a certain gifted genius at their university. He could not believe that Seraphim turned out to be so smart, and the young man did not know what to do now, so he went to the laboratory to Miss Grace, who called him to her. But when he opened the door, he discovered that the girl was not alone, but in the company of Seraphim. When Jack timidly asked what they were doing here, Hazel became angry and stated that she asked Professor Carlos to give them time to talk in private. The girl suspects that it was Jack who sent the anonymous statement. The young man pretended that he did not understand what she was talking about, but Miss Grace continued. She said that the members of the commission confirmed that the calculations of the Wood hypothesis were correct, but someone convinced them that Seraphim passed off someone else's work as his own and they came to them at the university and demanded evidence, and besides her, Seraphim and Professor Carlos, only Jack knew about it and had to keep everything secret. The girl threw a stack of papers at the traitor, shouting that his stupid behavior was not worthy of a graduate of one of the most prestigious universities in China. Hazel asks him how he could succumb to envy so easily. Jack begins to shake with fear and stutters and tries to apologize, saying that his mind was clouded. Miss Grace screams at him to apologize not to her, but to Seraphim. Jack gets to his feet and awkwardly tries to force out an apology. Seraphim laughs because he thought that Hazel called him here on some important issue, but this turned out to be such a trifle. This seriously angered Jack. He asked the young man whether he cared that his life could go downhill. Seraphim leans towards him and says that they have been working all their lives for a bright future, and this incident became for him an unusual obstacle on the way to it, which he overcame and is ready to move on. Already in the dormitory room, Tyler, having heard this story, was surprised. Who would have thought that Mr. Clive would be set up by a senior student if he were in his place? He would not be able to forgive him so easily. And Daniel grabbed Seraphim and called him cool, because he heard how he put that old man from Sakura in his place. Tyler declares that from now on, their boss is a university celebrity, which means that in order to get a girl together, all he has to do is say that he lives in the same room with Seraphim. But the main character doesn't like the speech, so he decides to ask if they plan to drive him crazy. Daniel calms him down and explains that he is only saying this because he really thinks so. Seraphim offers to forget all this, and he will treat them to dinner if only they all leave him behind because he just received the prize money. 
Seeing a silent question in the eyes of his neighbors, he explains that this money came to him for proving the wood hypothesis, and this is an amount in the form of a family or eight noble sum. His neighbors, having heard about this, could not get enough of how lucky they were with their roommate. Seraphim decided to find out where another of their comrades, Philip, had gone. Daniel heard that he went to play basketball because today is a tryout game with the team from Taycock University. Seraphim admits that he didn't even know that Philip had already been accepted into the team. Tyler reports that this also came as a surprise to them. It turns out that he is not only smart, but also good at sports. Besides, he's also a great guy from a rich family, but Tyler still thinks that their boss is still a hundred times cooler. Seraphim decides that it's better for them to go and watch the game, because whether it's a trial or not, the competitive spirit has not been canceled. A fight had already broken out on the basketball court. Philip blocked the opponent's ball and, having taken it away, moved towards the opponent's hoop. His efforts were not in vain. On the first try, he scores into the hoop. Seeing how their comrade carried out the attack brilliantly, Tyler decided to shout out words of encouragement to him. One of the cheerleaders heard this and turned around angrily and asked the guys what they forgot here, because Anna University students were sitting on the other side. The young people smile awkwardly and ask her for forgiveness for their mistake. Suddenly, the fans, taking a closer look at the young man's face, recognized him as Seraphim, the genius about whom everyone was talking, and this melted their hearts. They admit to the main character that they are his big fans. This delight was noticed not only by Seraphim, but also by the Anna University basketball team. The guys reacted sharply negatively to the fact that they weren't getting all the attention, but the game continues. The enemy tries to get around Philip, who blocks him. Suddenly, he hits the young man right in the solar plexus. Seraphim noticed this and began shouting that the enemy did this on purpose. A student from Taycock University states that without physical confrontation, there is nothing to do in basketball, or he can go on the court himself and show how it should be done. Seraphim approached Philip to lift him up, and one of the players was already shouting that the young man was not part of the reserve team and this was against the rules. The bully believes that they don't have to follow the rules. This is a test game, and if Seraphim is not satisfied with something, then let him show it how it should be. Philip tries to tell his friend not to pay attention to this, but Seraphim decides that if they want to see wild basketball, then they will get it. He will show them real sportsmanship. The rivals are only happy with this outcome. They do not believe that the mathematical genius will be able to defeat them. Seraphim takes off his jacket and declares that he will score a hundred points for his opponents. Opponents simply laugh at him, not understanding what hundred points he is talking about. But the player did not have time to come to his senses when the ball was already in Seraphim's hands. The team captain yells at the other players to stop the new guy. But Seraphim already knew that nothing would work out for his opponents. He literally, like an eagle, soared into the air above them to throw the ball. The entire Anna University rejoiced when the ball hit the basket, comrades shouting wishes to their boss. But the opposing team is not ready to give up. They must concentrate. But they were unsuccessful again. The ball seemed to be magnetic to Seraphim's hand and then hit the target. The current score is Taycock University 34 points and Anna University 39 points. The opposing captain is again trying to get everyone to play more aggressively and wants them to at least just block the young man but Seraphim quickly noticed and analyzed their new type of attacks. He simply distracted the opponent and, without moving, threw the ball into the basket. The player admits to the captain that since the young man is too evasive, they cannot effectively block him. The enemy gets furious. He takes the ball himself and orders everyone to attack together because they need to score no matter what. But it was not to be. Seraphim knocked the ball out of his hand and, jumping up, immediately scored another point. The opponents no longer even understand what kind of ball it was. The captain orders from now on to simply avoid this scumbag. But they couldn't just bypass and score because Seraphim is not the only great player on the team. The Taycock University team again failed to carry out its powerful attack because Seraphim can hold off three of their players at once, and that leaves two against four. The captain again makes a speech about how they have no right to lose and need to move into battle. But after a few more halves, they are already lying on the court exhausted. The score by this time was already 57 points for Taycock University and 159 points for Anna University. Finally, the referee announces the score and says that the match is over, 
Seraphim's comrades rejoice. Mr. Clive, despite all the honors, decided to approach the opposing captain and say again that he knows that he deliberately pushed Philip. Now he will have to remember that karma works seven days a week. After the game, one of the Taycock University fans gently pulled Seraphim back. The young man thought that she wanted to stand up for her captain, but in fact she wanted to ask the young man for an autograph. Other fans hurried after her with open notebooks at the ready. They even managed to quarrel over who should get an autograph first. Then another fan materialized behind him, which made him feel even creepy. Having noticed the girl out of turn, a fight immediately broke out between the fans. Seeing the turn the matter is taking, Seraphim decides to get out of there as quickly as possible. Gradually, the fame of the young genius spread faster and faster throughout Anna University, and all the locals were already trying to find his accounts on social networks. Seraphim woke up in the dormitory in the morning, woken up on his phone and discovered that there was an unimaginable number of subscribers on his page. Suddenly a fairy appeared in the room and congratulated him on what he had achieved, noting his 20 million fans, and that the hidden task called the famous person had been completed. The creature noted that they had not seen each other for a long time, and she was glad to see the owner. The fairy did not expect that Seraphim would be able to complete the next task so easily, it seems she underestimated him. Thanks to this task, the young man comes to the conclusion that his fans can also carry out the tasks. From this it turns out that there are missions, the success of which depends on the level of popularity. The system never ceases to amaze him. The fairy confirms this, because communication skills also need to be learned, like everything else, this experience is undoubtedly important in the life of every person. Seraphim already regretted asking her about this, but he wants to further find out what reward he will receive for successfully completing the mission. The fairy appeared here to give him his reward. The creature was angry that Seraphim did not consider that this task had a teaching function. Therefore, the fairy decides to leave, leaving the young man alone to deal with everything himself. Left alone, Seraphim was a little sad, but decided that he could cope without her help. It turned out that the mission of a famous person has two phases, the first of which has already been completed, and the second is in progress. Seraphim has already realized that the number of fans plays an important role. He still cannot believe that they can really complete tasks. Flipping through the feed, the young man also comes across mentions of his name in connection with something called a battle of intellects. The Battle of Intellects is an international competition in which the best minds from more than 10 countries take part. China, the country of lighthouses, the country of cherry blossoms, the country of eagles and the country of witches are fighting for first place in different fields of knowledge. In the last game, the winner was a contestant from the country of Mayakov, several steps ahead of his rivals. This time, China approached the selection of candidates less responsibly, but was only a few points behind. Such competitions do not show the true potential of an entire country, but the public does not think so. The country of lighthouses, which took first place, ridiculed China, thereby angering its people, and this time China demands revenge. At this point, Taylor finished her explanation about this show. She explains to Seraphim that the country has high hopes for him. Everyone thinks that he will be the one who can put the country of lighthouses in its place. The young man considers this another stupid show. He is already thinking that if he had known in advance that Liana had morning classes, he would not have come here. He tells Taylor that it's not worth worrying about and should just forget about it because he won't be participating. But first, the girl offers him something to watch. Seraphim picks up a tablet to watch the winner's interview, being completely confident that this will not convince him. The winner says that this time they will have only one goal, to retain the title of winner. The interviewer chuckles and says that there is talk that in China there is one brilliant boy who can compete with the country of lighthouses. The winner laughs and notes that she most likely means a student who received invitations from different universities at the same time. The participant shrugs and replies that he very much doubts that an 18-year-old boy will be a strong competitor to him. The interviewer replies that it is difficult to believe, but there is information that he disgraced the mathematician of the Sakura State. The man believes that these are all tricks of Asians, which are not worth falling for because they are mired in vanity. From the side of the country of lighthouses, real students will participate in the battle of intellects. 
China, in his opinion, expels those who have already graduated from the university. He even wants to bet that their vaunted genius won't even appear on the show, thereby showing his worthlessness. As soon as Seraphim finished watching, Taylor suggested that he stop commenting. Under the video, there were a lot of words about how China will not give up and they must definitely win. Seraphim at the same moment learned that he was able to complete the second phase. This time, the young man will not remain on the sidelines. He declares that he will take part in the battle of intellects. Very little time has passed, and the news is that Seraphim will take part and fight for the title of king in the battle of intellects. While Liana and Seraphim were walking through the park, they had already heard strangers talking on this topic several times. Miss Solis noticed that her betrothed is quite popular. Suddenly, her smile disappears from her face, and she admits that she is angry that he did not tell her that he would be taking part in international competitions. The young man was already seriously scared when Liana burst into laughter again and said that she was actually joking. However, she noticed that he had not only fans but also haters. Liana tells the guy to try hard, and he declares that they will definitely receive the cup of the king of the battle of intellects. The girl laughs again, and they decide to continue their walk. It was a busy evening in the office of the team developing the Battle of Intellects show. One of the employees burst into the boss's office and said that they had lost their last sponsor. The boss thinks that this is outrageous, because what kind of trust can we talk about when they do this to them? The assistant wants to know what they should do now, since they have already spent too much money from the company's budget on television and radio broadcasting. The boss remembers a meeting a couple of weeks ago about investing funds and discussing where they would be spent. This becomes another headache for the boss. They have little time. He is not sure that they will be able to find a new sponsor. In addition, the loss in the battle of intellects led to attacks from haters from other countries. He is afraid that few will want to join the team this time. The assistant wants to tell the boss one more piece of news, and the boss asks him not to mumble. He reveals that Seraphim Clive has decided to join them in the upcoming competition. The boss doesn't quite share this joy because he doesn't understand what use this boy is in their situation. Let's say he became one of the participants and can even make it to the international stage, but will he be able to beat all the participants from other countries and become the champion of the Battle of Intellects? Of course, he gained quite a lot of fame, but what does this give them? Their goal now is to increase ratings. The boss notes that this seraphim is very famous, but what if he fails at the national stage? The head believes that now they need to worry more about how to move into the top programs and find sponsors, and it seems that they should reconsider the questions for casting. At the dorm, the roommates were already lined up to see Seraphim so that he could tell him how some example was solved. Tyler noticed that Daniel, as usual, distracts their boss from reading, but the young man explains this by saying that he just wants their friend to practice explaining tasks and feel confident on the show. Seraphim interrupts them. He told them that those responsible for developing the program called him and told him that he did not need to go through the casting and that he would automatically get into the first round. The guys are happy for him and believe that it was the director who appreciated his ability so highly. Daniel notices that Philip is strangely quiet and sitting in the corner of the room, so he asked what the young man was doing so hard. Philip replies that he is busy watching the most talked about news on the internet. And he, it seems, found out that their boss was the only one who was exempt from the casting. In addition, he reports that many anti-fans have appeared who want to put Seraphim in an awkward position. The main character slams the book shut and decides to repeat once again that there is no need to worry about him, because in the face of absolute talent, nothing matters. Three days later, the debate of the king of the Battle of Intellects, the qualifying round, takes place. The charming presenter greets everyone, introduces herself as China, and announces the qualifying round is open. After passing the first audition, only 100 applicants among tens of thousands of applications were able to advance to this round. And today the final round of participant selection will await them. They prepared 100 stages so that their candidates could compete with each other. Contestants will answer questions simultaneously, but only the first 10 people who give the correct answer will receive points. Then the ten participants with the best results will become real competitors. Later they will represent their countries at an international tournament. China once again asks to welcome today's candidates, and everyone begins to applaud until the confetti stops flying from above. 
The tournament began and the first question appears on the scoreboard. Tyler and Philip no longer understood anything. The picture was more like some kind of mosaic. Suddenly, Tyler noticed that many players were looking at the screen with their heads tilted strangely. Philip recalls hearing about a similar technique called 3i. With its help, you can superimpose several pictures on top of each other, and the different elements will immediately be highlighted. He realized that they were studying the screen from top to bottom vertically and left to right horizontally, most likely combining several photographs into one large one, and then comparing them to quickly find differences. Tyler chuckles. Now it's clear, after all, only the first ten people will be able to get points. And at that second, the comrade was seized with panic. What if Seraphim did not know how to use the three-eye technique? An assistant ran into the technical room with the news. He brought the boss the hottest internet news. The headlines already said that the country's main genius, Seraphim Clive, could not even pass the qualifying round. The boss is pleased because he sees that many people are interested in this. And this means only one thing. They must take advantage of this farce to attract sponsors. The head carefully selected the questions for this round, and none of them are related to mathematics, because no matter how genius this seraphim is, he cannot be so wasteful. China was surprised when only ten seconds had passed, and the contestant named Seraphim was already ready to give his answer. But to everyone's surprise, the answer turns out to be correct, and the young man receives the first ten points. The main character had no doubt about his victory in this task, since the reward for the last draw was the power of inspection, and its effects are simply amazing. Then the young man gave one correct answer after another, increasingly shocking the audience. The boss watched the game, and Seraphim, he didn't understand how this was possible. This guy is a mathematical genius, isn't he the one who solves universally complex problems? If the young man wants to glorify his city, then he needs to concentrate, the man could not even believe that there were such comprehensive geniuses in the world. The assistant tries to tell the boss that things seem to be getting out of control, but the boss just yells at him to stop talking nonsense. The henchman hands the head the phone and asks him to look at the comments. On the internet, people mocked Seraphim and believed that the show had specially altered the questions for him. The boss loses his temper because he asked his assistant to hire professionals to stir up interest in the show and thereby attack Seraphim. In fact, the assistant found a fairly strong PR company. But what he failed to foresee was that within a couple of hours, the PR team had found quite a few subcontractors. The boss encouraged his employees to direct all their anger at a man named Seraphim Clive. The employee immediately decided to clarify what was wrong, because this guy doesn't seem so bad to him. But the head reminds him that the same employee worked as an anti-fan for two years, and he should already know what he's doing. As a result, a misunderstanding occurred, which led to mockery of the program team and insults to Seraphim. His comrades continue to admire their neighbor because he has already scored 104 points. Philip notices and wants to know if his friends think the second candidate looks familiar. Now in second place is a student named Dave Romer. His results are also very good. Philip recalls that last year he took third place in the debate tournament, and in terms of knowledge he can easily compare with the winner, the boss breaks down and rushes. He orders the assistant to immediately contact the PR company because these comments need to be deleted. The head sits down in a chair and, bowing his head, understands how big they screwed up. The entire budget was spent on renting the premises and concluding a contract with a PR company. Suddenly, an assistant bursts into the room with a joyful expression on his face, and the head was even a little scared from such suddenness. But the assistant does not listen to him and simply hands him the phone with the words that there is a person on the line and he wants to become their sponsor. The head can't believe if this is the turning point. The only condition put forward by the client was that Seraphim Clive be the face of the program. China announces that the tournament has come to an end, and now they can all congratulate the participant named Seraphim, who answered correctly all 20 questions in a row and took first place. Dave left the studio a little devastated because he only took second place. Walking down the corridor, he tried to restrain his anger, since he was sure that the winner had simply been leaked the answers in advance. The next day in the laboratory, a student approached Tyler to ask if he was rooming with the same winner in the final round of the debate tournament. Another classmate overheard this conversation and decided to say that he had heard that the answers were leaked online. Liana overhears. Their classmates are trying to find out what is the secret of Seraphim's success. 
Suddenly, Mike Vosel sits down next to the girl and greets her. Daniel noticed that their boss's girlfriend was having problems and decided to go up and say that the place next to Liana was already taken. Mike decides to ask if there is someone's name written on this place. Daniel was about to take action, but Seraphim suddenly grabbed him by the shoulder. The young man wants to know if everything is okay with his girlfriend, but Liana calmly replies that everything is fine and invites him to sit back together. The teacher finally comes into their classroom and announces the start of the lesson. Her name is Rose, and now she will teach their foreign language module. She hopes that everyone present understands their profession, although it may seem that the specialty of mathematicians and physicists is much more complicated, languages also require deep knowledge. After graduation, they will have many opportunities and can get jobs as interpreters, translators, and diplomats. To begin with, Rose wants to have them translate a short passage in Chinese. Mike decides to volunteer first because he wants to get his dose of everyone's attention. Carrying out tasks at the board, the young man is already anticipating victory, since he is sure that Seraphim is completely zero in languages. Rose checks the assignment and praises the student for a very good translation. But he immediately declares that this task, as far as the aesthetic side is concerned, is not ideal. So there is something to work on. She sends Mike back to his seat, and the student feels his whole body shaking with despair. Rose calls Seraphim to the board so that he can also try to translate the passage. Only now the young man has woken up a little, and Mike has already managed to think that finally at least others will get a little of the teacher's wrath. Seraphim asks Rose to repeat, since he listened to what she said and also wants her to repeat what language they are translating into. The teacher hands him a chalk and in a stern voice orders him to go to the blackboard first. Mike sits on pins and needles, eagerly waiting for Seraphim's pretense to be exposed. But then suddenly the student tells Rose that he doesn't have enough space on the board to write everything down. The teacher orders him to write until he runs out of space. Mike rubs his hands, realizing that Seraphim will face the public shame he deserves. But everyone was only surprised to see how the young man translated the phrase into different languages, and the space on the board actually ran out. Rose stood in silent shock. She wrote this passage herself. The student not only has a complex logical structure, but also unusual content. She can't even believe that he is really capable of translating the text into 20 languages so easily. The teacher understands that one glance is enough to understand that this text is of first-class quality. Seraphim seems to have the level of a professional translator with 20 years of experience, as if he is fluent in 20 languages. The young man turns to Rose and says with a smile that the place on the board is over, but the teacher doesn't care anymore and she tells him to finish there. Having announced that the lesson was over, she wondered whether an 18-year-old student could be fluent in more than 20 languages. Rose wanted to talk to the dean about this. Seraphim sits down next to Liana and asks if she saw how good he is. The girl praises him, but at the same time wants to know when her boyfriend started to stand out so much. Of course, Seraphim cannot tell her that everything he has now is thanks to the educational system. Eight hours ago, a fairy visited him and said that thanks to his performance in the rematch, he had helped him advance in his mission. He asks the creature to show him the panel and the fairy does it. A screen appears in front of him. The young man sees that nothing has changed in the table except Fauna's points. He became curious why this indicator was always at zero. The fairy explains that Fauna's points are equal to achievement points. Since Seraphim has not reached a certain level, the point system is locked. The young man does not understand how he could not reach a certain level if he has 13 million subscribers. The creature answers in a slightly mocking manner that for this he needs 20 million. The hero then decides to lie on the bed and think about where to get so many fans. Maybe he needs to achieve a higher status. Seraphim comes to the director and asks to be given sick leave. The director had already assumed that their genius would participate in the battle of intellects, so he didn't mind and wanted to know how long the young man would be gone. Seraphim replies that the team warned him and two weeks will be enough. The director notes that this show has become very important recently, and their student must try hard and not disgrace Anna University. The main character asks him not to worry because if he participates in this tournament, he will certainly win. Meanwhile, in the office of the director of the television station, the head is considering the applicants, Seraphim and Dave. He knows that they are both first-class mathematicians and talented young people. The director of the TV show confirms this information,
but Dave is known to be more interested in promoting himself on social networks. In the last tournament, he took third place, but many believe he was simply unlucky. The head admits that initially he wanted Dave to lead the team in the international tournament. But in the end, they chose Seraphim. The director subordinately praises him for his good work. But the director, sitting down in a chair, notes that he noticed that the internet is not calm now. The head supports his leader and replies that people nowadays send spam to everyone. People will always find something to argue about, especially with regard to fans of various television projects. Don't feed them bread. Let them insult someone. The director tells the head of the program to keep a close eye on this and always be aware. And the most important thing to remember is that they have an entertaining program. You need to make sure that the opinion of the audience will be in their favor. The director also promised the employee that if he tries hard, a great future will await him. And finally, all the participants and the head of the TV channel gathered at a general meeting. The director announces that for the sake of the popularity of their show, they have decided that each participant will choose an individual challenge and immediately warns that repetitions are prohibited. One of the participants was dissatisfied with this task and believes that it is dishonest. The head also stated that they invited Professor Carlos from the University of Science and Technology. He would judge them and give a fair assessment. While everyone began to whisper about the professor, the director immediately decided to confirm that this is exactly who they were thinking about and reminds them about the tasks that they can choose a difficulty from 1 to 10. As a result, the participants must receive the most objective assessment possible, of course. The head hopes that the guys will do everything possible after all. Even the average genius cannot perform the task at the seventh level of difficulty perfectly. The grumbling young man even seemed to calm down when he heard that Professor Carlos would be there. But suddenly he was pulled back. It turns out that the last person may be at a disadvantage. The director states that he gathered them all so that in the end they would choose the best project. Seraphim raises his hands and says that since he came last, he will choose from the remaining options. Hearing this, Dave decides to go first and draw a card. But the head is not very happy about this because Seraphim is the face of their program. Dave asks everyone present if they are okay with him taking this card. The head, seeing that the complexity of his card is nine, decides to clarify whether the young man is sure that he wants to keep this particular option, but the young man stands his ground. And finally, all the students drew their cards, and it was Seraphim's turn. The main character pulled out a card with the tenth level of difficulty. The task is that the subject examines 500 glasses, nominates a spectator, and chooses one of the glasses. He then turns away and closes his eyes while the spectator changes glasses in a random order. Once the arrangement is changed, the subject will have to find the chosen glass of water, judging only by sight. Dave asks his opponent if he will stop at such a question. Seraphim reminds him that this is the essence of the choice. The opponent sighs and promises that they will definitely watch Mr. Clive's performance. Dave is about to leave and finally states that he hopes that there are no fake players in the show. As soon as the young man left the room, the participants immediately dubbed him a rather ill-mannered person. Seraphim doesn't understand what's wrong with people and why they don't like his question, how they should even care. The director of the program reminds the young man that among the participants there are many students from the Imperial University, and it is not surprising that they do not like him. The main character droops a little and wonders why even scientists treat each other this way. Meanwhile, strange comments continued to flood the internet. They wrote nasty things and speculated about the show and Seraphim. And on the 1st of November, the internal finale of the Battle of Intellects finally began. China, standing in the spotlight, greeted all the participants. Opening the national finals, she stated that they were honored to welcome Professor Sid, who would be judging the participants' performances. Sid is the youngest expert in the field of neuroresearch, and his works have been recognized by the scientific community not only at home, but throughout the world. The professor promises that science is the only criterion by which he will judge. The head of the channel, left alone with Seraphim, wanted to discuss preparations for choosing a viewer for the test, whether it would be necessary to do this in advance, or whether the young man could handle it himself. The young man does not understand why this is necessary, and the director begins to explain to him that he needs a trusted person, since he was not seriously planning to carry out this task alone. 
Seeing Seraphim laughing and sighing a little, the head can't believe that he really wants to do this alone. Mr. Clive states that if they want to rig the competition, he will simply leave. Now, looking at the live broadcast of the program, its director prayed that the young man would not let him down. Sid evaluates the performance of the first participant and says that it is worthy of nine points, but taking into account the complexity, he can only give 54 points. China says that this result is not enough to make it into the top five, but the contestant still deserves praise for his remarkable performance. She announces the next participant, and it is Dave, who has already participated in the Battle of Intellects more than once. The presenter turns to Professor Sid, since many viewers have questions for him. The question is that facial recognition, whether only the eyes are involved in it. Sid responds that intelligence involves not only memory and calculation ability, but also visual processing skills and much more. Some people are able to recognize spatial distances faster than others. Other people can recognize the pitch of sounds faster, for example. The professor explains that these are all different types of mental abilities. As the competition progressed, Dave finally found the right face. Sid notes that taking into account the complexity, the young man's performance can be called ideal. For such a short execution time, he can give him 10 points. China announces that if the points are multiplied, Dave's current highest score is 95. The presenter announces the next contender. He turns out to be the winner of the qualifying round named Seraphim Clive. She is surprised by the complexity of his task. Sid replies that before he begins, he wants to express his surprise that someone chose this question, which he did not expect. This question was intended as a model for other tasks to establish the difficulty. China replies that first they need to choose a spectator who will help with the task. Finally, one of the spectators was chosen. He quickly walked onto the stage and stood next to Seraphim. At the second studio, while others are watching what is happening, the participant asks Dave why he proposed a viewer. Did he really want to put on a show with Seraphim in the title role? The young man replies that he has nothing to do with this. He just doesn't want anyone to rig the results. Backstage, he checked all the props to make sure they were in order, too. Dave suggests that even if this seraphim has aces up his sleeve, the only way to see the difference in glasses is by resorting to cheating. Unless the spectator is a figurehead, only shame awaits him. One of the participants also suspects that this task cannot be completed without cheating, but Dave believes that it is unknown how this fool seraphim entered Anna University in the first place. The viewer looks carefully at the glasses and realizes that there seem to be no markings on them. Finally, he selects two glasses and points them to Seraphim. After examining the glasses a bit, China asks him if they can move on to the next part of the challenge. A sleep mask is put on the young man so that he definitely cannot see anything. The presenter wants to know what the professor thinks about Seraphim's chances of success. Sid does not risk assuming the likelihood of success but he believes that this test has reached the limit of human capabilities. But since he is asked so, he thinks that the young man's chance of guessing is close to 1%. China notes that she can't believe the professor has such a bad opinion of Seraphim, but Sid reiterates that he adheres to scientific criteria. Mr. Clive made her choice, and also pointing to the glass, raising his head, he was a little shocked by the look of the presenter. The girl noted that less than two minutes had passed, she wanted to know if he was finally sure of his choice. Seraphim was adamant and had already definitely chosen the glass. And then fanfare is heard, the spotlights flash, his answer turned out to be correct. Dave jumped out of his seat from such a sight, he did not believe that this was possible. Another participant suggests that maybe it was a special glass, such as a bottom that was too thin or thick compared to others. But Dave understands that this cannot be. He saw them with his own eyes, even using the defocusing technique, it is impossible to distinguish them. China wants to ask what the secret of Seraphim's success is. These words made the young man a little embarrassed. The presenter turns to Professor Sid, saying that a couple of minutes ago he had a low opinion of this participant, but he ideally completed the test, and now everyone wants to know if there is a scientific explanation for this. Clapping his hands, the judge suggests that Seraphim has an exceptional skill, four-dimensional vision. He explains that everyone knows that mammals cannot distinguish between yellow and abstract colors. Using an example, he shows that in their eyes, tigers and plants are the same color. The eye of an ordinary person can recognize three colors. Crows, for example, they see exclusively black.
but birds, on the contrary, see crows as multicolored. Only those who have four-color vision can see shades that are inaccessible to the eye of an ordinary person. Scientific research has long proven that water reflects ultraviolet rays, and if human vision can discern these rays, the water will have a certain color. China is delighted, which means that the talented seraphim relies on special vision and can see what is hidden from the eyes of an ordinary person. Sid notes that this is not all. The water is constantly in motion. After the order of the glasses was changed, the surface of the water also underwent changes. To complete this test, you need not only exceptional vision, but also high skills and graphic thinking. This is the only way to find the similarity of water patterns that have changed. Sid could not even imagine that this task could be completed to perfection. He reads that this is perhaps worthy of the title of winner of the Battle of Intellects tournament. The professor believes that the young man can rightfully be called the King of Intellect. At the same time, a foreign tournament of the Battle of Intellects was held. At the height of the show, William was informed that information had appeared that a strong rival had appeared in China. And it seems this genius got a perfect score for his microscopic identification of water. After conducting an analysis, their management came to the conclusion that this task could not be completed. William goes on a tirade about how these narrow-eyed monkeys can't seem to get rid of their inferiority complex and always make these false claims. And since they have decided to take such a step, William is afraid that Chinese representatives of the program will soon contact them. He assumes that this was all done to preserve his reputation. William decides that he will need to rip off as much money as possible from them and win the tournament. The assistant is wary that competitors might reveal something secret about them and start pursuing them, but William is not worried. But he is not worried because even if they dare to dig deeper and even use the money, this could be their own end. Moreover, if he loses to this amateur, the Chinese version of the program will cease to exist forever. William believes that this is the way of the world. Being weak is the worst sin. Only the strongest can survive. Coming out of the building, Seraphim didn't even really have time to understand anything when he was grabbed by the hand and dragged along. Only after a couple more seconds did the young man realize that he was being resolutely pulled along by Miss Hazel. Suddenly she stops and, turning her flushed face to him, asks if he is free because she has one request for him. Seraphim does not yet understand what she specifically wants from him. Miss Grace blushes even more and admits that this is a personal matter and she needs his help. The young man laughs and asks her to tell him everything. They are not strangers. Hazel gathers her strength and admits that her parents insisted that she go on a blind date. And she wants Seraphim to pretend to be her boyfriend. This request shocked the hero. Mr. Clive tries to delicately say that he has a girlfriend. And why doesn't Hazel turn to someone else? She admits that she has had no friends since childhood and Seraphim is the only one with whom she communicates closely. Seeing that the young man does not want to participate in this adventure, she decides to resort to blackmail and declares that if he does not help her, he can forget about her. Seraphim asks not to scare him anymore, and he still agrees to help her. The girl happily grabs his hands and continues to drag him along in an unknown direction. She decides to tell him that they are going shopping, because the young man did not think that he would go on a date in such an outfit. Seraphim objects and says that it seems to him that there is nothing wrong with these clothes. Hazel explains that his outfit is suitable for everyday wear, but is not suitable for such a special occasion, so they need to buy him a formal suit. The young man was a little taken aback. The last time he wore a suit was when he was a child. He has no choice but to obey his fake girlfriend. And now he enters the restaurant dressed in a brand new suit. Seeing the decoration of the establishment where they came, Seraphim understands that this is a good place. Hazel admits that she doesn't know what her parents were thinking, but they introduced her to a 30-year-old man. She doesn't understand. Her relatives apparently believe that she is not able to find a husband for herself, but this should be a man who matches her and is no less talented. They are finally greeted by a waitress who wants to know if they have reserved a table. Seraphim replies that they will send Terry here to meet with Lucius. Finally, the girl leads them to the desired table, where a man was already waiting for them. Lucius gets up from the table to greet Hazel, but immediately notices that another companion is with her. The girl cuddles up to her boyfriend and also greets Mr. Terry, introducing Seraphim as her boyfriend. She admits that she came here only to talk. Lucius invites them to the table to talk calmly. 
Hazel, meanwhile, asks Seraphim to bring another table, which was not originally designed for three people. The young man sits down at the table and notices the man's incredulous look. He probably doesn't believe that the young people are close. Lucius admits that he has no idea what Seraphim is doing. The hero immediately replied that he is a student from Anna University. The young man goes on the offensive, saying that he has a rich family and declaring that he is prettier than Lucius, although they, of course, cannot compare in age. Seraphim wants to know how old his competitor turned this year. He assumes that he is 40. Mr. Terry chuckles in response and notes that the young man is also quite eloquent. Nervously hitting the table, he wants to know how Seraphim's family earns money. The hero doesn't understand why his family is being discussed here, or whether Lucius is so old that he still checks other people's accounts, or maybe he has some problems with his own. The man decides to ignore this and move on to the fact that he heard that Miss Grace does not have a man. Seraphim laughs. He calls Lucius a fool because the young man immediately said his reason for being here. He presses Hazel closer to him and declares that this is his woman, with whom he fell in love at first sight. Sooner or later their parents will find out about this, so he advises Lucius to stop courting Miss Grace. This infuriates the man. He gets up from the table, shouting that he will deal with Seraphim, if not now, later. As soon as Lucius disappeared from sight, the young man turned to Hazel and began to beg her forgiveness. He admits that the enemy managed to piss him off to which the girl only laughs and replies that she understands everything. She thanks Seraphim once again for helping her, and now she doesn't even know how to repay him, or maybe he can become her real boyfriend. The young man laughs in response and asks the girl not to be stupid. Their awkward situation was resolved by a call. It turned out that the director of the television station was calling Seraphim. He quickly said goodbye to Hazel and made fun of them to leave here as soon as possible. Seeing how quickly Seraphim left, Miss Grace felt a sense of sadness in herself. She was even afraid to ask herself whether she liked the young man. Already in the television station building, the head apologized to Mr. Clive for forcing him to come so urgently. Seraphim, on the contrary, is grateful to his call because it helped him escape. He would be in trouble if Liana found out that Hazel was molesting him. Entering the office, the young man noticed that all the participants had already gathered. Dave noted that Mr. Clive was the last to arrive again. Seraphim laughs and asks him to understand. He is a freshman. He has so many classes that it is difficult to find free time. The other participants looked at him in surprise. They even managed to forget that he was only a first-year student. The head finally tells why he gathered them all here today. It turns out that to break the news, they invited two academicians to prepare them for the international tournament. Seraphim is surprised. He thought that this was just an entertainment show. Why go to such trouble with calling academicians? The director explains that two days ago, a couple of foreign participants contacted them and offered to play along in the tournament. Dave thinks it's strange that last year they weren't so confident, and now suddenly they're offering to give in to them. But the head corrects him. They did not offer to give in. On the contrary, they demanded money and promised that they would concede victory to them. Dissatisfied screams from the participants immediately began to be heard in the room. They did not understand what was wrong with these foreigners. The head admits that they did not know what was being planned against them, so they decided to refuse their offer, but immediately after that they dissolved the international company. Now they claim that they tried to bribe them to fake the results of the tournament, and of course they allegedly refused them. Right now the media is engaged in malicious speculation by spreading slander and calling them academic scammers. This is an extraordinary situation. Many countries have turned against them. One might say the nature of the tournament has changed. They must win. Losing is unacceptable. At the same time, Seraphim received a new mission, called Science Without Borders. He needs to prove to the world that science is pure. Conspiracy and fraud are unacceptable. The chapter introduces participants to the same academicians from the Thai Academy of Sciences, who will now be responsible for their preparation. Academician Josh speaks first. He says that they are all the pride of their country and quite possibly the greatest representatives of the human race. But it is stipulated that even top-notch athletes with the help of professional coaches can improve their results. This is a team competition, and the focus of abilities varies from competition to competition. Therefore, he must test their abilities of memory, calculation, observation, as well as experience and intuition, 
after which they will determine the order in which they will perform, it will depend on the strength of each participant. The preparation will take them about a week, so he advises everyone to work hard and do everything possible to bring victory to their country. As soon as these speeches stopped, the participants decided that they were already free and went home. The director didn't understand this. Wasn't it said that the preparation would last a week? Why did they all run away on the first day? Josh notes that there is no need to be here all the time, and also wants to say that he does not believe that they finally have an all-round genius. This time, they will definitely win. A week later, standing at the airport, Seraphim said goodbye to Liana. The girl was excited and wanted her boyfriend to give it his all. The companion reassured her and promised that he would not lose. A warning sounded that boarding for his flight had already begun. Seraphim hurried to take his seat and finally told her to be confident in him. He is the most powerful genius 